Can't stay warm. The only secret to make it through is to take what's in front of you. The fear of death and the thrill of speed. And all the lights in front of me drive to the coast of steel faster till it disappears.
All right, so we've had four people show up today. Thanks for coming out. Anybody that's watching or picking us up on historicals. We've got a four-person Blood Bowl gauntlet tournament. This was fed by a 10-man uh, league for Blood Bowl 7s. All of this is 7s for those of you watching. So this is round one. We've got Short and Sour, Tyler and Clawrickens by Ian on table one. And we've got the Bull Salon Dog Frogs versus the Cunning Squigs on table two. That's Jackson and Gabriel. All right. Thanks, Joe, for tuning in. All right, so both teams started off this their round one with the timeout kickoff events. So both teams are starting on round two. I do believe that Tyler's Dwarves dugout is showing two touchdowns when it's supposed to be showing turn two. And Ian's dugout is showing zero touchdowns in turn three and so let's go look at tour play you can follow along on tourplay.net just look for dwbbl sevens All right. it does look like we are on turn three bottom of the third short and sour has the now we got a lot of camera views. So. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Uh, so we are at the bottom of the third. Short and Sour is taking the bottom of all of the innings. A little bit of reading. Here we go. Here it comes on tour play. You can see uh, Ian's going and monitoring stuff. All right, I'm gonna go talk to the dwarf team to see if we can rearrange their dugouts to make it much easier to see. But we do have the tour play window up. You can see that it's zero to one. And we are in the bottom of the third. Okay, so over on the Cunning Squigs versus the Bolson Dog Frogs. Let's see if we can get that. We're still running zero to zero. We're also in the bottom of the third there. It looks like we have a blizzard on that table though. That's fun. Blizzard's making it a pain in the butt to throw the ball, catch the ball, pick up the ball. Joe, uh, we had two Skaven teams in the league. Neither of them showed for the, uh, the tournament. Both ended up with real life commitments that made it so they couldn't be here today. Not a 
lot of much going on on the Goblins versus Lizardmen team. We do have two Lizardmen team on this tournament day. Both the Lizardmen players showed up. Everybody probably will play everybody else. I don't entirely remember what the listings or the pairings tiebreakers were, but we're three rounds today. There will be no drafting of players between rounds. So the players have to make all of their, all of their players, the coaches have to make all of their players last all three rounds. Since fouling is going to be a big, a big deal, especially in these early games. Okay. So we're watching what happened after the kickoff. Lizardmen scored in round three. We're at the top of the fourth on this table. But they had an impressive kickoff event. Most of the uh, most of the dwarves ended up falling down at, as opposed as a factor of the kickoff event. One of Ian Soros's is in the casualty box, though. Looks like he did decide not to use his apothecary to bring that back up. Looks like we do have some movement on table two, the blizzarding table. And they also seem to be in the top of the fourth? No. Yes, we are yeah. top of the fourth. Both players are playing pretty quick. We only spent 11 minutes or so each to get to round four. During league play, a lot of people are rounding 15 to 18 minute mark. Yeah. And it's more casual play. These, these guys are committed to trying to go fast. They're after going fast and they're after that championship. So we're using a ball marker that's visible from these cameras. It's this blue, uh, looks like a base. And on table two here, you can see it's really close to the end zone on the bottom right of the field. Looks like one of the, looks like the goblin trolls moving in to block the pickup. Gabe's counting spaces, trying to make sure he's got enough room to do what he's doing. Looks like he's making a dodge roll to get out of position from one of the... Oh, and he didn't make it. Rolled a two, needed a three up. Looks like... Looks like Jackson's texting some family members. Let's <laughs> take a look at every game on table one. All right. So these these ball markers, you can still see them when they're picked up, but they're slightly bigger than your standard Blood Bowl base. And you can still see the blue ring around the ball carrier at this point in time. play nice with both of the tables. Right? Not very. Jackson's asking how clear his texts are. We can all let him be known that most of us don't have high def super receivers, so we're not actually seeing his conversation. All right, Ian's in deep thought. Yes. 
Ian's thinking really, really hard on what he wants to do here. He's got one point already. He's checking the strengths on some of his opponents. If, if, if these Clawricans can score a second time in the first half, there's only two innings left to do. So he's got two innings left to get it down into the end zone. I absolutely love mixing all these sports ball words together like blood ball makes me do. <laughs> I realized I had the wrong scoreboard up. My bad. I'd like to say thank you to Sarlacc, Southside Sarlacc, for coming out and helping us stream this today. My pleasure. Actually, just rebranded the Twitch stream. We're live on Clack Attack streams. Clack Attack? Yes. Clack attack streams. For the new business. So the idea is that we'll actually be doing a lot more of these streaming for the people that can't make it in today. Although today, it's Sunday, and it's rather quiet inside. We do have a couple of tables still open. Plenty of space if people want to come down and get a game in. Uh, we do have some people playing some Commander, some people playing Kill Team. And I think we have... Actually, we have our Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament going on in the cafe. Nice. And uh, it looks like I've, we've got one of our D&D &D tables back. Yep. So Ian's struggling to figure out exactly what the best strategy is to try to get the ball into the end zone for a second time in the first half. Ty Tyler, you can tell, he's, he knows it's there, but he, th he thinks he's probably got a good advantage to keep him out of the end zone. So as long as he kind of focuses on what's in front of him, as opposed to trying to get another touchdown, this, this half, he'll probably tie it up, if not take it, for this first round. This round's going to end at 5.30 hard, so if they're in overtime, we're going to end at that moment. If they're not even in overtime, if we're in the second half, we're forbid we're in the first half they will be ended then and we'll score as it as it is but both these guys are going real or both these tables are going real good yeah both of these tables are playing pretty fast and it's looking like they're honestly on track to finish the first half by 445 440 445 range yeah we started this round at four o'clock on the dot we started streaming just before that Yeah, let's do. <clears throat> Still, oh, just in time for the door. Nice. Looks like Dreos, the skink runner lineman, has scored a touchdown. All right. So let's go look at some stats on the Olson dog frogs while we're doing this. Both on dog frogs. So, yep, we're looking at the standings. Overall in the league, the Bulls on dog frogs play sixth. They had a total of nine turn league points the whole time. That means they won three games. As we can see, it looks like they were. So we're going to want to back out to just standings as opposed to the team. Yep. I don't know if you have the standing on that page. One second. Yep. So, looks like they had played six games, of course, because it was a six-week league. They played all six of their games. They won three and lost three. They scored ten points all league and only gave up nine points all league. They did give up three casualties while only causing one casualty. Looks like they had a bunch of injuries. They received eight injuries. Only issued one. Yep. And then they didn't do a lot of fouling, which is kind of indicative. You can see that there's not a lot of fouling in this league. Oh, yeah. No fouling. Oh, three fouls. Yep. 
four, five, five, six. I think. Yeah, six fouls a whole week. So that's the bull saw dog frogs doing pretty good. So all we also have is the cunning squigs. That's who they're playing. Kind of squeaks came in third for the league, jumping up two places at the very, very last game of the league. He's won four of his games, lost two of his games. He only played five, so if one of his losses was going to be a forfeit. So he didn't show up for a, a week of play for whatever reason. He's got a very, very low touchdown count, six. Yeah. And, and Six against our, yeah, six, and six, then let four, four against him. Yep. Uh, so when he caused a lot of time casualties uh, with five or the whole season. Yes, that's uh, exactly how he has got this team set up. Second most casualties in the league. Yeah, yeah I wish the Cheese Bay Rat Pack could have made it today. <laughs> they, uh, Jordan's an amazing player when it comes to those. Those rats score and beat up people. It really kind of does whatever. Whatever his opponent's wanting to do. If his opponent's wanting to play dirty, he's been playing dirty. If his opponent wants to throw the ball down range, he's going to go catch it. <laughs> you know? Um, unfortunately, he was just not able to make it today. <coughs> uh, he was the last season's uh, championship. So his name's on the trophy for our little blood ball trophy already. And, this, and today we will figure out whose name is going next to his. If we go back to the teams on table one, and talk about the short and sour versus the Claritans. Looks like we got the ball back about midfield, working back across the way there. He's putting, he's trying to build a wall up, and he does, looks like he has grabbed the ball. The Lizardmen are caging him in, trying to make sure he can't do anything. Uh, dwarves are not known for slipping out of cages. They normally break out of cages. <laughs> dwarves are not known for being invasive. No. <laughs> no. So the short and sour team, the dwarves here, we're we're fourth all league with six games played, four wins, two losses, scoring seven touchdowns all league. That's a little bit more than one touchdown a game, and only giving up four touchdowns all league, which is pretty dang good. They've given out seven casualties and only received two. So that's that goes a long way because dwarves are kind of pricey. Yeah. So to replace your dwarves is kind of a very unfun thing to do. It's kind of like replacing elves. Right. It's not as bad as replacing elves. Then. Looks like they gave out eight injuries while only receiving one. And they're... Burke holds his score is only 44. That's kind of a combination of how well they did, who they won, and how well those teams did versus who they lost against and how well those teams did. They gave them a 44%, which is actually pretty low in the league, which is why his 4-2 and two, uh, score for the league has him down in fourth. Uh, the only worse one for the 4-2s and twos is the Cheese Bay Rat Pack. Basically, everybody he played did not do good, Yeah, is what it is. So even though they both beat up a bunch of people on the field, those people did not go on to beat anybody else. They didn't get a dragon across, yeah. They didn't get a dragon across the community. And because with my head series playing Blood Bowl, everything that I played was undead, so I'm just used to stuff dying again anyway. Right? <laughs> uh, that, that, was, that was my first team, is the... Uh, the pumpkin, pumpkin guys, guys with werewolves. Uh, the necromantic horse. The necromantic horse, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, and those zombies, zombies just, just do not, not want to move. No, no, they want, they don't. That's like, I still have not played my black horse, and I would like to do that. I need to change that. <laughs> so this season, I had to step in uh, during the league and play as we had a player who had to drop out for medical reasons right at the beginning uh, and was not able to return until right at the end. Uh, so I played our newly painted team store the uh, Imperial Nobles. We ran them as the Griffin Griffins because we're based here in Griffin, Georgia. And I placed ninth in the league of 10. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I only had six touchdowns all game, and I'll tell you, those are the only six touchdowns I've ever scored in Blood Bowl ever. <laughs> okay. You got my amount, my total amount, like doubled or tripled there, at least. So I got to play five games because somebody did. Uh, it counts uh, my one of my games as a failed to play because I uh, conceded in the first half. Yeah. I was playing Gabe's squigs and there's just a point in time where he had the ball and wasn't going to score and he was just going to take the time to kick the crap out of me. And my guys were just too expensive to let get kicked. They were all down. They were starting to get piled up. My hop carry was done. And I, I, I did it for the money. I, I, I quit for the money. It looks like we've got both of these games going into their final turns for the half. We're looking at table one with Short and Sour versus the Claw Ricans right now. Let's swap over and take a look at the Dog Frog versus the Squigs. It looks like they're trying to look up some rules. Because I'm looking at both, both players are deep in the rule books. We have two rule books on the table for players to do. Because there's always going to be edge cases in these tournaments. Yep. This is when it really, really starts banging up. Some sort of excitement just kicked up. The whole store's volume just increased. I don't think it has anything to do with this rules call. I'm going to go see if I can assist with this. I will be right back. Gotcha. This was a throw teammate action that went horribly wrong for the goblins. He critically fumbled the goblin that he was throwing, his troll was throwing. Oh, no. But the, the gobbo did land on his feet with a perfect six roll. Well, that's, I mean, that's good at least. Golly, critical, critical so fail on that. If, he would have, if, if the gobbo wouldn't have landed on his feet, it would have caused a turnover as he would have dropped the ball. But... The turn still goes on. Gabe still has more people to go, but the troll's turn instantly ended as his action was done. Right. The through teammate action. So that's what the check was, was exactly how does that progress. It, progress, <laughs> it progresses just like a fumble when throwing a ball. So you, you just... In this case, it's another goblin. Yeah. <laughs> with the ball. So it's... Uh, well, in this case, he had the ball. So there's a lot of shenanigans going over there, making it fun. Both games are one to zero with only one touchdown scored. Currently, it's uh, both Lizardman teams are the ones that have scored so far. These lizard teams uh, are built very, very similar. They are very, very skink-centric. And what they do is they like to go out and use their stunty to run around their players and spread out real good, or run around the enemy players, and just interfere wherever they can and try to strip the ball when they can. Not that they're really built to strip the ball, but they do make it for teams that are less stunty, difficult to run around. So it's capitalizing on their natural agility. The stumps were piloted uh, by Jeremy Standard. It was his first ever miniature style game. He's normally a magic player. 
he came in and went undefeated until the very, very last game, where he was defeated by Gabriel's Squigs. That was six games played, five wins, one losses, with 14 touchdowns for Jeremy Standard all game. So that was his the stumps. They were Wood Elves, and everybody was not afraid of those Wood Elves at the beginning of the season. <laughs> By about the third end of the third week, people started being like, this newbie's kicking everybody's butt. And sure enough, he just kept on. Every game that he would win, it got scarier and scarier for everybody at the team. Don't mess with the Wood Elves. Right? Everybody really expected him to show up today to take the tournament. So Jeremy's son, Ian, Liam, rather, Liam, uh, was the vamp vampire team, the newer vampire team. Mm. And he kind of went the other way. He had one win all day, all, all league, and five losses with his, with his league win being the last league week. And they didn't play each other. It's not like Jeremy lost to, to Liam or any sort of like nepotistic shenanigans. Nope. He won it fair and square. I can't remember who, but I do remember that the... Uh, the Wood Elves lost to the Goblins. And that was the only loss. I can look it up real quick going back in the history. Um, Vampire um, Teens win was against Short and Sour. Yeah, oh yeah, against the Dwarves. Playing here on table one. So that's what's also going to kind of help the Short and Sour's little Burkhold score is because the one team that beat him went five and one and five all league, right? Looks like the dwarves and lizards are in second half already. Struggling to, to kick pick up the ball. Half. Oh, sorry, I switched over to the to table two and just saw that they've started their second half. Yeah. Uh, or they're setting up to start the second half. And as far just kicked as I, off. Yeah, as far as I can tell, table one's right on the very, very last turn. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the them. top of six. Inning six. Go back and take a look at what we've got going on here on table one. Yep. Oh, darn it. And then, let's see here. Yeah, so this is, they're quickly looking up the index. The index on these books are probably my favorite game index of all time. They're, it's a good index. It's, if you need to know something, yeah. you can quickly look at it. It's what an index should do. Yeah. You say index, and say, I quickly look through the index and find the rule I need and like, find the page. Like, yes, that's one of the most works. intimidating things and why I never touched Warhammer before any Warhammer before Blood Bowl is because the textbook reference in the middle of the game always turned me away. Yeah, you don't know where to turn. And yeah. it's like it becomes a choose your own adventure just to find the rule. Right. But Blood Bowl has it fairly more manageable. And you yeah. need to navigate. I think there's only one thing that's in the index that you can find if you know what it's called. But, like, honestly, I can never remember. Uh, when somebody calls it out for me, like, where's this rule? It sets a flag in my head. I'm like, it's called this other thing. And I just, I wish I could remember right now. Of course, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Oh, and that we looks like kick off the second half for table one. Yeah, what happened there? Table one. Ah, Lizardman with another touchdown. Player number three, Rerolia Essa, the skink runner lineman. This, again, this is what I'm saying. But the teams are very skink centric, so the skinks are going to be doing all the, the jobs. Ian has a Croxagore on the table. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the model in time, so he's using a dark elf from 40k as the stand-in. <laughs> luckily, luckily it plays the same role, and they yeah. take up the same space. Well, that's good. 
In fact, you can see it now on the center line of the feeling. It's the unpainted gray Dark Elf 40K model <laughs> is his Croxagor. Ian also has a couple of Sauruses. One you can see in the casualty box. And we are in second half on table one. The weather has not changed yet anyway. It's always possible with a kickoff event that the weather could change. Mm -hmm. So kickoff event for table one, again, is timeout, which means oh if they were gosh. in later turns, they get an extra uh, inning, but in early turns, they lose an inning. So this whole game is going to have two innings removed from it, from standard. Overall, they've got, what, almost a half hour on Ian's turns and 17 minutes, just rolled to 17 minutes into Tyler's turns. Coach Tyler, Coach Ian. <laughs> Sounds like we've got some activity going on on table two right over there. Let's take a look. Sounds like one of the lizard men on the Bolslan dog frogs is hitting somebody. We're checking armor. Looks like we've got somebody knocked. Goblins aren't that hard to beat up, but they are if you're a bunch of squigs. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're a bunch of skinks. <laughs> Looks like he's plotting a dodge track. With his ball carrier. So a lot of the bases for the Bolslan dog frogs are the old school Warhammer Fantasy Battle square bases. Because mm -hmm. base size doesn't matter in yeah, Blood Bowl. Because you've got the grid base board, so. That big blue model in the center of the table is going to be a troll. Gabe's pushing guys around, it looks like, with some of his gabos. Yes, we do have a little blinking on cameras sometimes. It's uh, just a nature of the, our setup this go around. We had a fast setup with everything, so. Please bear with us. It's not really all that big of a deal. I don't think. If it is a big deal, let us know. Let's take a look over on table one. We have a lizard man turn going on here. <laughs> So the Clawrickens are starting to kind of cage up. Looks like Doors have the ball and are trying to push in. Yeah, the top of the ninth in the second half. Made a roll. Couldn't see it. Both down result. Oof. Of course, it's a dwarf with block, so that just means that the lizard falls down. It's going to save the dwarf's uh, drive. 
It's not going to cause a turnover. Push. Wall two got a block and push, so took the push, obviously. The dwarves here really could stand to push some people down and on their back to get around them. Pushing, they don't lose their tackle zone. And on their back or on their face, they do lose their tackle zone. Makes it easier for the dwarves to get around them. Yeah. It's that whole lack of agility thing we were talking about. Coach Tyler showcasing that he's sponsored by PlayStation with his little <laughs> PlayStation tattoo. Getting all defensive. The squids are going to start moving around. You got to use that dodge. And that's a block. Nice. So that's a hit. That dwarf's going down. Yep. He has six on the armor roll, it sounds like. both coaches on the near table on table one can kind of hear our commentary <laughs> and so they're starting to try to talk to the commentators which is you and me right <laughs> focus on the game score try and score so the chaos stars for all the bouncing was placed by me as the to one second we're going to pivot over here to table two because it looks like we have just got a touchdown scored by Skeet Runner Lineman. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. I think it's called Ijethek. Ijethrex. Ijethrex. Yes, okay. you know the names on these runners are very, very important. <laughs> the auto generated names from Tour Play are very, oh, very great. important. I'm going to make it soon. Well, let's Skeet Runner number two. That puts that table two to nothing in favor of the lizard men. We are in the top, bottom of the eighth. Very, very interesting. Yep, so we're setting up for a kickoff for that.
All right. And so we're checking the rules on a turnover. Dwarves have put a lizardman on the back. With a seven armor penetration. That might have been a stun. So it looks like on Ian's go, the coach on the Lizardman's team, the Clark and Skink runner lineman, Drew Quack Noshk caused a casualty to Maldron Farseer, Troll Slayer. That Troll Slayer is going to miss the next game. That's not what you want in a gauntlet game like this. So he won't be back until the very, very final game. That's going to hurt Coach Tyler's total. Let's see him. Let's look through his team. Six. Short and Sour team has got nine total players. Some of these names are definitely chosen by Coach Tyler. Uh, two of his players are named the same thing, not earned. They have not earned their name as far as Coach Tyler is concerned. He has spent all of his treasury, so he's down to zero gold going into this gauntlet, which is a good idea. He's dead. He's got two dedicated fans and three assistant coaches, four cheerleaders on the table. Those are going to help him with those very, very niche, but seem to pop up all the time events from the kickoff events. He's got four of his team are upgraded with three linemen and a dwarf runner with upgrades. One of his linemen has a fend, one of his linemen has strip ball, and one of his linemen has kick. So hopefully he's using the kick on those kickoff events. It's about the only thing that skill's good for, but it's really good. This dwarf runner's got dirty player one plus. So if he's missing one guy, one teammate member down, so is the Clawrickens is going to miss a skink lineman for next game too. The skinks are rather cheap, so it's not as pen like punishing. Looks like we've got one, two. Three. And they can't refill their rosters between games. That's true. So it looks like we've also got nine players on the Clarican team. They'll put them down to eight for the next game. Mm. Both of both of those teams. So there's some hard hits. And this game is going fast. They're already in the tenth, uh, tenth down. So the Clarikans have a chameleon skink, which generally has on the ball, shadowing, stunty, and dodge. All of those are great to get around the board and kind of cause some man for a little tiny guy. Um... Those community skinks don't have the movement regular skinks do. They're down to seven spaces as opposed to eight. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, he's also got a safe pair of hands, which means if you drop the, the chameleon while he's got the ball, he gets to choose where it goes as opposed to letting it go to random. Yep. Which means he can, if he's got a teammate in an adjacent space, 
drop it in that zone, forcing a pickup uh, on his team already. It will cause a turnover, but he still has control of the ball. So it looks like his Soros blocker also has shadowing. That's kind of rough. I bet you that's... Let's go look to see who's missing in the game. So it's... He's going to be missing a skink runner lineman for the next game, number two, uh, which... No, no, no. So that's the who caused that casualty? Oh, oh wait, wait. Number two knocked out number 21 ah, of the oh. Troll Slayer, causing him to mix the game. The... Troll Slayer, whose name is not earned, number 86 mm -hmm. on the Dwarf team, is the one who knocked out Zalks, number five, from the Lizardman team. So he's only missing a Lizardman. Next go, uh, whereas the Dwarves are going to lose one of their Troll Slayers. Those Troll Slayers aren't cheap. No, he's got one more in reserve, though. But at least he comes back in the end. Yeah. He'll come back for game three. 95,000 gold for a single troll slayer. Ooh. Now let's look at these stats. Um, so the most expensive teams in the league, the Bolsalon Dog Frogs are actually the most expensive team in the league coming in at 1,080,000 uh, gold points. So everything's measured in thousands of gold points. Right. And the Claricans are right behind it with the second most expensive at 1,075. So that's just a difference of 5K between the two of them. Of course, the inducements rules are in place. So the short and sour is only 5K shy of the Claricans. So that's probably why there are no special inducements. There's not really anything you can pick up for 5K, but they're at 1,070. Of course, the fifth most expensive team in the league is the Griffin Griffins, which was my team. We placed number nine. We spent a lot of money on our team. Uh, it doesn't do us any good, but we spent a lot of gold on it. See, what other things we have? The Cunning Squigs have the third most dedicated fans of the entire league. They're up to five. Oh, nice. Uh, they're tied for five, but they they were late to the game getting five compared to the other two. So right. that's what puts them specifically in third. The Short and Sour is the second most versatile team. That means that between touchdowns, casualties, completions, interceptions, injuries, and fouls, they have the most of any of those combined. <laughs> or second most. They're tied with the Cheese Bay Rat Pack in the league. Nice. Mm. Again, was not able to show up today. Um, for 23 combined, uh, all of those categories I just said earlier. The Con Squigs are fourth with only 18. Clarkins are the fifth most versatile team on the league. So the Clarkins and Short and Sour both being versatile means they kind of score all of those different bits. Which makes, honestly, kind of makes the speed of their game a little right. confusing to me. Because the Clarkins are a little bit more expensive by 5,000 points or gold points, right? Um, but. Tyler, Coach Tyler's really navigated his team to, to kind of be very well-rounded. And it's done really good for him. He's got a lot of wins. He's got points. He's the third most expensive team on the, because he's earned all of that money. He's not got the most fans. So most of those are going to be from touchdowns, the, the points that, that he's earned for right. You get the gold points he's earned. They're going to be coming from a lot of touchdowns. He is the fifth, Coach Tyler's team is the fifth most scoring team. Uh, 
I've got a call from the field. Yeah, right now it looks like Short and Sour is knocking down a handful of the Claricans. But he does not currently have the ball in hand. And there are... He has one down left to play after this. So can he make it to the end zone? That is a question. He's got one down dwarf right there next to the ball, one next to the ball, and the ball is going through... Alignments? Let me see. Oh, oh, wrong one. It looks like we're going through one of those skinks. Yeah. All right, let's take a look over here at table two real quick. We'll come back to the end of table one game shortly. Obviously, because they're still at the they're at the bottom of the ninth down here. Uh, match reported. Table two just finished. Yeah. Ah. They're doing the post game wrap up. Take a look at it. And so one of the things that we we were doing is uh, in the sevens after every game, somebody might draft out. You always check to see all of your teammates that have upgrades if they draft out. Right. We already made a call that none of those will. However, I thought I had changed the settings in the league to make sure I want to do it for this. Obviously, I have not. So I got to go back in and fix both of those teams. Well, now that since. Uh Table two has come to an end. Take a look there. We had a 3-1 finish, or 3 nothing finish, I'm sorry. And that ended with uh, nine downs. So they only actually played three downs, well, two and a half downs, actually, uh, for the second half of that game. Yeah, so it looks, so the end of the match is a concede towards the Cunning. The Cunning Squigs did the concede. If you scroll down to the last touchdown I think the concede went into the system before the touchdown did um, but it still scored so he probably made the last touchdown yeah and then did the concession so um, they are gonna get upgrades as they go along so each of these teams gets to choose whether they're getting primary or secondary skills for, uh, to be randomly rolled mm -hmm. and it looks and then they're gonna have to go in and manage their team to see what it is but both of them got chose random secondaries and the system will go ahead and choose what player so it looks like the pogoer on the goblin team the pogo stick guy is getting a random secondary today and one of the number six skink runner linemen Dreos is also getting a random secondary. All right, let me go fix this for both of these teams. Sounds good. And meanwhile, we're back on table one. Uh, looks like, uh, oh, did one of the doors manage to pick up the ball or that a wizard man with it? Yeah, it looks like one of Short and Sour managed to get their hands on the ball while I was looking over there at table two. Meanwhile, the Claricans have two lizard men on their feet. One, two, three, four. They're, everybody else is on their side, back or front. Got knocked down. All right, those edits have been made. Both those players have been recovered to their teams. I love the fact that Tour Blade has that kind of versatility. Good. That is good. And just with nice. two clicks, they can come right back. Yeah. Let me go ahead and inform both coaches that their teams are updated. They just need to go ahead and do their do a little bit of TO cleanup. Sounds good.
Ian's got one of his lizard men going around here to try and block the dwarf runner. I don't know if it's the runner that has the ball. The short and sour has possession. He's trying to make it trying to make a run to tie it up, but Ian is doing everything he can to block that door from getting into the end zone. Walking into a dwarf. I'm not sure which class of dwarf just got blocked, but he is on his back. I think that's the chameleon skink over there by the dwarven ball handler. That's what I was thinking. I wasn't too sure. I did hear, uh, when I went around to take a look, I did hear Koji and say something about shadowy. Okay. <clears throat> so I believe. Ooh. There it goes uh, down. Ooh. Wait, yeah, so maybe that's it. So it looks like it's a blitzing action. So there was a block done, which counts as a movement. So what? There's a block done, which counts as a movement in your blitz. Ah. So it looks like there was a blitz action. And then after the blitz action is done, if he still has not caused a turnover, he still can move. Oh, yeah. So he's finishing out his move. Nice. You only allowed one blitz action per activation. Right. Just like you're also only allowed one pass, one handoff. Looks like all of the teams that we have on today are non-throwing teams. Yeah. I haven't. I personally have not encountered that many throwing teams in Blood Bowl. So with my uh, with my Imperial Nobles, we were throwing a lot, and that caused a lot of people to like, oh. Well, if we're going to throw, let's throw. And the, the games were generally a lot more, I don't know, West Coast yeah. college football more like. Yeah. Where there's a lot more a lot cannon more arms out on. there, right? But these the, these tables are more SEC-based. <laughs> <laughs> they ground and pound, grind it up. <clears throat> yeah, head down, watch your shoes, stay up. Punch stay them in up. the mouth. Yep. Sounds like a lot of fussing coming from table one. We just got up to the top of the uh, 12th down. Yep. The conversation is going on between concession or play through the final down. Yeah, both teams are worried about losing another player for next game. It's a, it's a valid concern. If, it is very valid. if the dwarf cannot score right now, should he just quit? The whole league, we've had very, very good sportsmanship plays. So I am hoping that they will finish this out, both, both halves of the inning. So the ball handler's got seven spaces to travel to get a touchdown. He had seven to travel, <clears throat> and I think that's that's going to, so if it's one of his runners, which I don't think it is, if it was one of his runners, it means he'd have to go for it once. If it's one of his troll slayers, he'd have to go for it both times, because you're only allowed to do four go for, or two go for it. Yeah. Um, if it's one of his linemen, he can't reach there, so he's going to have to figure out how to do a handoff. Um, but there's no good way to do a handoff action. Nobody's in front of him. Right. He is out on his own. Looks like he's got some block rolls going on right now. So we'll see how those turn out. 
Looks like you got a stumbles and a push. Stumbles work like uh, blocks unless your opponent has dodge. Most of these uh, lizardmen do have dodge. Right. So they're they, quite dodgy. If it has a dodge, it works just like a push. So essentially, against most of those lizardmen, a stumbles and a push is just two pushes. Mm -hmm. I definitely can feel and empathize for Tyler in this whole decision. He's he's potentially got a chance to tie it up. Right. He has uh, a chance to tie it up and give himself a little bit of uh, aggregate score for the long term. Right. But we do have 12 minutes left. 12 minutes left in this round of the, the gauntlet. So if we cannot score in 12 minutes, it's, it's all moot. Exactly. Some dodge checks with his run, his dwarf trying to get out. He's got one more check. Okay, what well, looks like he's going for it. The shadowing didn't work for it, and he made it. He's rolling to see if he gets it. He's using his re-roll to go for it. Looks like we tied it up right at the end. So we go into overtime, but we only have 11 minutes left for overtime. Oh yeah, we do have a half. So the last at the bottom of the, bottom of the inning. Oh, that was real clutch. Hopefully they can set this kickoff up, get it going. Then they'll have to do another kickoff for the overtime round if they get it to it. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a tie in round one. That's real exciting. See how the kickoff goes here. I do like that they're setting up rather quickly. They're not over speeding, but they are trying to be considerate of the time that they have left. Looks like we have 10 minutes left. Tyler trying to make sure he's got a decent, uh, decent defensive setup there. He does have the player with kick. trying to figure out which player is his kicker. This is the downside of not having your models painted completely, is it's hard to tell which player is which. He's looking for his number 24 dwarf blocker lineman with kick to make sure he's not on the kicking line and can be designated the actual kicker. Yeah.
Okay. Yep, that uh, that moment was so clutch that it almost didn't get recorded. <laughs> Looks like we got eight minutes left in the tournament round. Okay, so I don't know that we're using it in this particular round, but we did assign home and away dugouts. So you'll see a, both dugouts do not match. One matches the, the pitch, whereas the other matches the inverse pitch. And so currently Tyler is using the away team's dugout and is, and is actually the away team. So it just so happened to... <laughs> to set up just fine because we're short and sour at claw ricans, right? Yeah, um, table two also has the same setup where the grass side dugout is the away team on the stone field. It also helps delineate for our viewers that out there in cyberspace which, which table we're looking at at any given time. Yeah. setting up for overtime, the uh, last half of the, uh, the, the bottom of the inning, the last inning, 12, did not do anything for the Clarigans. No, it looks like though, in my estimation, they'll probably each get a turn. Right, with six minutes left on the clock, it's going to be hard to do anything. Yeah. But the first person who scores... It's likely that they both can't score. Right. But kickoff events do go crazy. They can. You can. I have scored on a kickoff return turn once. I just got the perfect confluence of events. That's exactly what you need for it. ran the ball straight into the touchdown. <laughs> Two players are trying to throttle down after their game. Lots of reading on these kickoff events. These are going to be kickoff events that don't happen too terribly often. Dwarves are getting their prayers to the Nuffle table. Mm, that was a cheerleader event. 
so they rolled off using their cheerleaders as bonus points. Of course, the dwarves, we talked about having four cheerleaders. It's like that. Dwarves have four cheerleaders. The Liz Clawrickens, however, only had three. Only had so three. The dwarves have won this roll-off, so they're getting the players on the knuffle table. Which is a specific thing to sevens. It's going to be in the sevens table. They're having a hard time looking at <laughs> Viewers at home might have realized that he rolled a two on the sevens league uh, prayers to the knuffle table, which means all of a sudden one of the reps is uh, friends with the dwarven team, <laughs> which means a roll on a five or a six is beneficial for an argue the ref call. That's only going to happen on a foul. Which may not be coming into pick into the <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be hard to do anything in the next three minutes. Got to remember, these teams were really, really tied up in like quality and cost. Right did very, very similar through the whole league leading up to this. Both players are very nice players. They're players that you want to play against. Yeah. Uh, they take the game seriously. But they're not going to... You don't have to worry about them table flipping if things go off. Exactly. Some of the lizardmen are getting some stumbles against uh, dwarves. Ooh. Okay. Oh, gonna see if he's got a chance to make a tunnel down there. But not sure if he's going to be able to get all the way. Those skinks are stunty with dodge, which means they, when they make a dodge roll, the stunty part uh, actually works in their favor. They don't get negative modifiers to their stunty roll from compiled dodge checks or from multiple tackle zones. They only get a, a regular dodge save every time for being stunty. So he's going to try to run that skink all the way down if he can. That skink is really, really fast, basically. Looks like that foul did not work for the Lizardmen. It's the oh, second man. time we've had a Lizard sent off in the entire league. Lizardmen has been ejected. Failed foul attempt. But it's one of those moments, if you don't win this game and you tie this game, like, you, you feel hamstrung the entire time. Almost as hamstrung as a loss. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not a loss. Uh, in the tournament points, a win is for a round, a round win is going to be three points. A tie is one point and a loss is zero points. So at the end, it's still much, it's better than better. a loss. But if you can eat out an extra two points for the league points or for the tournament points, yeah, it's you can cross totally that line a foul time, here. Yeah. <laughs> And we're almost out of time. We're in the very, very last minute. I do believe that the whistle will end this game. And there's the whistle, and we're gone. So this game is going to end in a tie. All right. So they're going to go ahead and do their upgrades and stuff. We will be 
back. We're going to keep this going. Let's go ahead and turn on some music, and we'll be back in about 25 minutes. Okay. Sounds as we do a break between rounds. Right
down to. We've already gone ahead and pulled. We've got about two minutes before players need to take the fields. But on table one, we're showing short and sour at the Bull Slon Dog Frogs. Short and Sour taking the away team slot again on table one. Table two, we've got Clawrickens at Cunning Squigs. So, <clears throat> coaches are about to start setting up in just a moment. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> here we go. Teams are setting up. So Tyler didn't have to move at all. He's going to be in the exact same space he was last time. It's going to be bound to happen. The smack talk has already started. So it's interesting how the system handled the tie. So we had one clear winner, one clear loser on table two, and we had a tie on table one. So it's kind of thrown Tyler to the top, I guess, where he's gonna play the winner of the last game. This is Ian's chance to get a win out of these Gabos if possible. Yeah, I was kind of wondering how the tie was going to be uh, managed by the system going in there. Uh, me not knowing anything about the system particularly, really. Uh, it looks like what I was going to guess it was going to do and default into the league standings. Right. <clears throat> I think that's exactly what it did, right? That's what so. it looks like. Because Short and Sour is fourth overall in the league. And Clarican's much lower than that. Either 67, I can't think. Yeah. Yeah, seventh place. That makes sense. <clears throat> Table one's got the coin toss already going. And I apparently can't figure out how to get it on the table. <laughs> there we go. I missed who won that coin toss. I think. I think, Jack, uh, I think Coach Jackson won, the Blizzardman team, uh, but has chosen to kick. Defer. Yeah, he's choosing to kick. So in my game against against him, he he won the coin toss and chose to kick as well. He, I think he likes to receive on the second half. Well, that's... From my preference, that's how I like to play. But that's a carryover tactic that I pulled from 
I would say actual football, but the, honestly, the only thing I had to compare it to is NCAA. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got nice weather on table one again. Got a lot of people in the in the stands for this up for this game, according to the rules. And table one has started. Pop the scoreboard up here. <clears throat> Dog frogs are uh, bringing in two Bloodweiser kegs. Uh oh. That's from inducements. 100,000 gold worth of inducements of that. Let's look at why. What's, what's that cost? Because weren't we all kind of sitting at the same cost or so? I'm looking through the numbers. Guess I'm gonna have to go to standings. Team short and sours inducements are two temporary agency cheerleaders, one part-time assistant coach, and two Bloodweiser cakes for 190,000 gold. The current team value that is on tour play is, it does factor in when you're looking at the total, what's in your treasury. And because of those three touchdowns that Jackson scored, it actually does dump a bunch of cash into his treasury, but it's not factored into your team value. And so I wish it was, uh, that's a, a, a feeling I think in a tour play software is that you see a thing, but it's not the it's actual not thing for the showing game. up what's gonna, what's gonna be used in the setup. Yeah, because, Generically, at this moment, um, no, I get, yeah, the dogs, the dog frogs are one twelve hundred ten against eleven hundred eighty five. Okay. So that's twenty five up, but they're the ones getting the inducements. Now. It, CTV is calculated using missing players, so your missing player does not count to your total CTV. Who's missing on the dog frogs? It doesn't look like anybody. It looks like all. I don't think they lost anybody last turn or last game. Yeah, all eleven of their players are available for this game. And uh, taking a look real quick at table two, they have gotten their setup kicked off. Uh, with nice weather, weather and uh, again another, a bunch of fans in the sta stands. A bunch of fans. So that means there's going to be a bunch of money on the line for this one. And there's the CTV between the two of them is only 5k off. Okay. Uh, leaning towards the skigs. The squigs have an extra 5k over the CTV. I think that. Uh, Let's look at this, but I'm saying. Oh, we hadn't looked at all the inducements that the, uh, I gotcha. So we had some cash, so, so the dog frogs used cash. Cash they won from last game, probably, to, to pay for those blood visor cakes. Whereas now the short and sour team was able to get two temporary cheerleaders, an assistant coach, and two Bloodweiser things out of his inducements. The difference there is showing the short and sour is throwing 995,000 versus the dog frogs 1110,000. So let now it makes sense. So I must have heard wrong. It looks like the dog frogs have the ball, so I'm assuming they're the ones who receive the kick. Looks like it. Cause we, yeah, because we're still at the top of the top first, of the first inning. So, yeah. yeah. Dog frog received the kick. 
and uh, Dog Fox already have a dwarf on its backside. I know. Oh, sorry, two. That, I wasn't paying too much attention. Was that from a kickoff event? I wonder if that was from a kickoff event. If it was, it hasn't been recorded yet. Uh, or at least it hasn't been recorded in tour play. Yeah, tour play doesn't do the kickoff events. Okay. Uh, those are rolled manually, and then yeah. there's no way to to manually input them into the system. Fair. So yeah, it probably was a kickoff event. There is a kickoff event where you just Had lose one D three guys. Yeah. So. Maybe he just rolled a one on a yeah, D3. Yeah, that's the kickoff event that loves to find me. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I just feel bad anytime <laughs> anybody gets I, that. I never feel great about it, I even if I'm the other team. short and sour side of the board already. Yeah, he's pushing hard. He is pushing very hard. If he gets it though, it's 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 a turn, it's a second inning score. And that's from that their side of the table, right? Mm -hmm. This is where it's about to get bloody. You just know yeah. it's about to get very bloody. what Tyler does here. He's got two doors that need to stand up. Yeah, for those who Man. don't actually know a lot about Blood Bowl, uh, each piece has its own movement rate in the number of spaces it can move. Except for having a special skill, standing up like that costs three of those movement spaces. So it means even most of the speed, speed of every door. <laughs> right? So they're tree men that can only move two. So they have to roll a D6 to Just see if to they to see if they can get up or not. If they roll high, they get that extra third space to move up to stand up. But also, if you knock over a tree, good on you. Like those things <laughs> do <laughs> not fall lot. down. High armor, high strength. More likely to throw three dice against you when you hit them. Yeah. Than one one die against them. Oh man, let's take a look over here at table two real quick. There is already a casualty recorded. Uh -oh. Looks like the Clawricans have lost one of their Croxigors. Oh no, that's the most expensive yeah. team member on his team. Oh man, that hurts me. Yeah. Now the question is, oh no, 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 no. The Croxigore has caused a casualty. Mm, the Croxigore caused so a casualty. So a casualty should always be reported with an injury. Ah, I we see. gotta find out so what the injury has not yet is. been reported. So let's um, see if we can look at the the dugouts to find out. So it'll be so on the left side of the screen the stone dugout for there. the squigs. I'm not seeing anything. Alright, I'm gonna there is I see one piece over in the uh, far casualty box. I cannot make out what it is. <coughs> I think that might be his chainsaw, dude. Might be. I'm going to go over and find out, make sure that we have this recorded. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, he just hadn't gotten around to marking it yet. So there it is. There it's his loophole loony. This chainsaw guy is badly hurt. At least that's one of the more bearable ones to get. I mean, early in the game? Yeah. He's you might as well have lost him last game for the miss next game. You know, it's about the same, right? Yeah. Like, if I'm not, if I remember properly, badly hurt, he either gets him back at the half or a chance to get him back at the half. No? No, okay, he's, he's out, out the, for the whole game. Oh, okay. But he'll be back next game. So, okay. so just it's better than a go. miss next game because yeah. there's only one game more. Right. So, to, to mix the next game is to be dead at this stage, except... You're redraftable next season, so we will have a season three. <clears throat> this is our season two of our Damn Wolf Blood Bowl League. And every time we end with a tournament. We keep changing now the tournament words. We're trying to feel it out and stuff. Yeah. Uh, last time was a single elimination tournament. Uh, and it was Ooh, it was really brutal. It was really cool. We had eight players, though. We had yeah. a lot more people that showed up. Um, and... It ended up with one of the Skaven, two Skaven teams taking the win. Oh, man. But it was well played. Every game was really, really tight. It was it was just phenomenal gameplay. I love I loved the players we have here. Everybody plays well, plays nice, and is focused on actually trying to win the game with their various strategies and stuff. So no one's trying to really mess you over. And I've only ever played like full size. I haven't played sevens or fives on Blood Bowl. <clears throat> I need to fix that. So sevens is an alternative game mode. It's in a different book. You have to get a supplemental book called uh, Death Something. I don't know. Listen to me. Sounds like the expert on this. Uh, <clears throat> Death Zone. There we go. It's the Death Zone supplement book. And it's in the back of the book is where they give you all the modifications for the rules for sevens. Okay. So in regular play, we call it 11s. You have to have a minimum of 11 players. Right. In sevens, it's supposed to be more of a uh, amateur league. Yeah. And so the maximum players you can have is 11. The minimum is generically seven. Of course, if you've got people that are out or dead, you have to start the league with seven players. Um, and the only time you ever really can concede with a lot, with no penalty is when you have fewer than three players left on the field. Oh my gosh. But you can still play with fewer than three players on the field and you just follow the rules. You have to have three people on the line of scrimmage. Of course, in sevens, there are two lines of scrimmage with a no man zone between it. As you can see on these mats. So these are actual sevens, official sevens mats that we're using. You won't find the center line that you would find on a regular 11s pitch. So the 11s pitch will have a center line going straight down the center, of course. And both players are lined up on that. And that is the line of scrimmage. Right. So on a kickoff event, if, if it crosses the line of scrimmage, it's a touchback. Well, in sevens, there's this no man's land. And so it's the kicker's line of scrimmage. If it comes back into the kicker's space, then a touchback. Okay. Or, of course, out of bounds is also causes a touchback. But these are some of the smaller differences between it. So you bring it a little bit more in line with your gridiron football. Yeah, you do start instead of like right on the face to face. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit more of like run up, then get hit. Yeah. Or there's tactics to, since you only get one blitz in a turn. There's the idea that you have to make your opponent come to you if you get the kick. Mm -hmm. You receive it and you run almost up to your opponent. Then everybody's, nobody gets hit right away except for one guy from a blitz action. Yeah. And then everybody else, your opponent has to move into engagement and then wait. So this causes a small delay in whatever's going to happen. So it kind of steals an inning from both players but lean skews towards the receiving team right. having essentially the upper hand in the strategy like getting an opportunity you, to stretch out the formation yeah you're going to have to fight me on my terms yeah right now my terms might not be well thought out <laughs> but they're still my terms right it looks like we've got a uh, fumble 
somehow the ball came out of hand. I missed that happening, but. Yeah, it looks like the skink has lost the ball. So this is the dog frog skinks. Oh, it looks like he's getting pushed away from the ball too. I'm having a feeling this was a throw action, trying to pass the ball and get it down range faster, and it probably just missed. But I, I like, like you said, I was, I was too engaged in the details of sevens and getting that across to, to fully pay attention. Now that I'm in town more frequently, I'll actually be able to participate. <laughs> That's always awesome. Yep. Yeah, bottom of the first. It looks like Gabe. Kind of all over the place, huh? We've got a skink with a, the ball in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Getting a little blink action. But yeah, the skink has the ball in the bottom right. But it I looks like he's it. already got a goblin right up on him. Yeah. And he's really close to the squid the cunning squigs. Target, end zone, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Three block dice. I see both down and a fall down result. Oh, that's two skulls and a both down. That's yeah. an unfun result <clears throat> right there. That's also going to cause a turnover. Next, yeah. Armor yeah, rolls are well on there. the goblin. Uh, maybe we had a block. We have dodge or block rather on that team. Kind of squigs. Let's see who's got block. Da -da 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 -da. I'm not seeing anybody with block. Uh, the train troll. But that was obviously not a train troll. Yeah. The train troll's no. in the center of the field, right on the Blood Bow logo. Yeah. I'm not seeing anybody on there. Yeah, I'm gonna go check that out. Make sure we're doing all right there. Let's see what's going on. So the inning switched up and the goblin stood up after having been knocked down with the both down action. So the both down was on the Lizardman team uh, activation and the first thing that the goblins did was stand that, that guy up. But now it looks like he's back down again.
Of course, this is where all the activity is, because that's where the ball is at the moment. Yeah. Goblin, get up. Fall down. So that loony with the chainsaw is one of Gabriel's, like, happiest units. It was one he was very happy with, because he has the chainsaw. He can really peel into bad guys and our opponents. Yeah. And throw them out of the game as fast as possible. And maybe even kill them. So it goes to his whole uh, fouling slash blocking, like lethality style of play. And he has scored two, that Looney is who has scored his two casualties on the season. Yeah. I mean, he gets a lot of bonuses for it. Yeah. But it does have some uh, some chaos to come back because you got to roll to see if the, the mm -hmm. chainsaw has kickback and comes back and chops you out of the game, too. Right. Um, so the fact that that Croxigore just absolutely smashed that chainsaw loony yeah. is a, it's really good for Ian. Hopefully he can keep his momentum up. Well, so far uh, it looks like it because I think there was another turnover. We have Ian back in control on the top of the third down. gotten the ball more than halfway through. It looks like and he has just taken it into the end zone. <laughs> oh, is that maybe the go for it roll? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Oh, look at the thumbs up there. That's Drakwak Snoskrish. <laughs> the Skink Runner Lineman, number two. Coming in with the touchdown. So these players on table two, they have these little printed red rings. Those are supposed to help to know when a player is stunned, which would be face down uh, by standard rules, as opposed to uh, face up when you just get knocked down, but your armor is not, mm -hmm. the armor penetration roll does not succeed. Being on your, being on your face, you're, you're down until a whole round goes through. Then you roll over onto your back. And from your back, it takes three spaces of movement to stand up. What's going on table one? I was just pulling up table one. It's not a lot marked. It looks like it's <clears throat> intense game. This We're like at the top of the fourth round, or fourth down. Um, still no major events have been recorded. We're tied at zero. Mm -hmm. um, dog frogs have the action right now. Looks like we have the ball, too. Oh, yeah. Dog Frogs have the ball, and it looks like he hasn't made it too far past the, his initial advance. Uh, he is also right there in reach and uh, in, in the tackle zone of one of these dwarves. Which one is, which one is that? <clears throat> Probably one of these dwarf runners, I think. Not sure what his name is, but I'm aware that he has a mighty beard. <laughs> <laughs> the only one you can tell different from this this angle is the one that has the gold plates. Yeah. And I know he's told me which one has the gold plates several times. And this may sound a little like a anti-dwarf, but they all look the same. <laughs> Casualty, we should see an injury report and a casualty report coming up. And he wasn't even around anywhere. I wonder what what that uh, turn of events was. So without a casualty, an injury report means that somebody fell down on the roll. Yeah. Like as a result of a like a going for it. it or something. 
Yeah, that's why I was like, I'm sitting here in my head wondering what's the story behind what just happened. Right? Looks like we'll have that injury report coming up here shortly. They'll be back for less game, at least. Now, these dog frogs have 11 players. They are very, very spread out in, in terms of players. So, there are two chameleons on the team, and everybody else is just a regular skink. That was his, uh, one of his more decorated skinks on the team. Which number uh, was it? At number four, he just lost his frenzier. Yeah, frenzy. So that's a... So frenzy is where when you make a block action, if you're successful, you have to follow up, unless there's no way to follow up. Mm. Uh, but you have to follow up, and then you have to do a second attack, even if you don't want to. Sometimes you do, but a lot of times it'll overextend your player, right. so they'll penetrate too deep into enemy territory with no support because of it. But they do get two hits on a, on somebody. So that's who he's lost is his frenzy. Uh, skinks aren't known for hitting hard, so being able to hit twice is potentially not valuable. Yeah. Because you're not trying to you're not trying to play that kind of game. Right. But it is always nice to have the option. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like the uh, dwarves have the ball now. We are 30 minutes into this there is table a, one. We just switched to the bottom of the fifth. And there is a dwarf that is sitting in the dugout for the casualty box. I wonder what happened there. Mm. It's a very intense game. It's a little bit hard to remember to to mark every injury and casualty. I'm gonna go gently prod them. And while that's going on, we're gonna take a look over here and see what's going on on table two. <clears throat> Looks like over here uh, for table two, we are at the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth down. Uh, missed the kickoff on the return there, and it looks, looks about like the squigs are keeping a tight formation and just trying to march right down the middle of the field. Uh, Gabe's got everybody surrounding his ball carrier, and it looks like it's, tr is that a train troll? What is that in his roster? Jimbo. Yeah, a train troll. It's a train troll leading the charge, keeping everything defended as best as he can. So I just got an update from about Table 1's dwarf injury. Uh -huh. That's a little bit more than a regular casualty. That's a dead dwarf. Oh. Like an actual casualty casualty. Yes. <laughs> There's a tombstone on the record. He... Gone. Okay. And uh, that dwarf casualty was caused by skink runner lineman number 12, Uta Guts. Congratulations to that little skink. This is uh, his first stat on record. Short and sour just uh, got themselves a touchdown after getting a dead dwarf. 
Uh, so it looks like they're getting ready to do a kickoff for the bottom of the six. We'll Just finished off their first half, I think. I'm gonna go over here and take a look at table two. Oh, I'm back and I see that there's a touchdown. Nice. Oh, hey, we got over here just in time. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. The uh, dwarf touchdown happened right after that dwarf casualty. Nice. That's always a, a pick you up when you're feeling down. Yeah. Like, nah, -uh. <laughs> I didn't need him anyway. Right, it looks like we had a touchdown while we were looking through all of that. I yeah, like this thing on tour play when you're looking at the individual game stats mm -hmm. uh, and it gives the line by lines. There's a right under the weather in stadium, there's a time bar, and you see how long ago things happened. Did they coordinate to the different notes on the bottom? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tour, tour play is actually really intuitive to use. It does cost money to subscribe to, to use it to run stuff. But I wish there was a little bit more guides. There's a few people out there that actually give some videos on how to get it started. And they're either way deep into it, and it all sounds like super Greek, which is which is more complicated than regular Greek for people that don't speak Greek. Fair. Um, or it's the most basic functionality that you can kind of use, you can tool around on your own and kind of figure out. Um, that seems to be the two user support kind of things that you find. And it's always from the community itself. But uh, as these things tend to be. But this software is the best for running this league. It's taken so much out of my season one. I did all of this with spreadsheets and. I'll never do that again if I can help. <laughs> I couldn't blame you there. So it looks like we're looking at rules on table two. And while they're doing the rules review, we're going to go over here and take a look at how the second half is getting started on table one. Looks like the skinks are keeping the pressure up. Already at the top of the eighth down. Kings are just going to keep it going. Let's take the scoreboard away so that I'm not covering up where all the action is because he is. Well, I say Skinks are getting it covered up. Dwarves have the ball, but Skinks are. Skinks are going to do everything they can to knock it out of his hand. Yeah, watch this. They're going to spread out while being kind of cagey. Yeah. Making it difficult for any dwarves to, to team up mm -hmm. on any one Skink, but also making it difficult for the them to run around them. Yeah, you got to pick your fights one on one. See, look how. And otherwise, if you're going to try to get any of these very narrow open spaces that he's leaving available, it ain't, it, you know, yeah. with the with the speed of these dwarves, it ain't really going to happen that easily. If it is, the dwarves aren't terribly slow. No, they're not. But they're not elf slash skink slash skaven fast. When you have to take one more square to get that step in that you need, it's gonna, you're feeling it. It's true, but it's not like zombie four, four space movement. Calling me out, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> to see the spread you've got, you've got like a tight group of four, and then you've got these three other ones that are kind of like, well, I guess technically it's a tight group of five. But it's just to keep the dwarf fenced in of what these other two are out there doing. Mm -hmm. They're not engaging, but to to make a break for it down that side of the fence, then the dwarf will have to deal with these two skinks. And not only that, you have to remember here that unfortunately short and sour is shorter and sourer being down two guys. No. Yeah. 
He also has that, that I just made a tie and I really need to make a win Yeah. mentality kind of burning in the back of his head. You know it's there. Right. Where the dog frogs are coming off of a win. And they where need to try to keep their momentum going here. They got three touchdowns and then they, the opponent conceded a re right away. That concession, by the way, lost him two dedicated fans. From conceding, you get you have a chance to lose a fan, and then losing the game that you conceded has a chance to lose a fan. He lost both times. So he went from having one of the top number of fans possible to now, like, just middle of the road. Average. Yeah, for a tier three team to do as well as they've done all the way, it makes sense why they had fans. Yeah. Although it's just a die roll at the end of the day. But it makes sense. It's thematic. And right. then also for him to show up to the round one tournament and be like, we're going to walk off the field. It makes sense yeah. why you lose so many fans. Yeah. Tyler's trying to figure out how to get out of his box. Working on doing that little sweep maneuver right there. I saw some dice oh. throw earlier. Uh, I'm guessing a, bl a block was thrown where nothing happened at all. There's never a time I want the ball on the lot on the end zone on the out yeah. the down line, right? I don't ever want it all the way out there. Anytime I see that. anybody doing that, all I can think of is push them into the stands uh -huh. and watch them get chewed up and get the ball thrown back out into play. Yep. That's it. Just there's nothing. In it. I don't have anything in it for the against the dwarves but like when i see that that just keys that mentality so like you want to learn <laughs> you gotta learn you don't make that i mean right now he's safe because he's got just a little bit of guard action mm -hmm. right. so we've it's... got some conversation going on over at table two i'm going to take a look and see what we got there uh they're in the top of the six so they're finishing out the first half here so it sounds like gabe needs a four up to do whatever he's wanting to do is positive I guess I'll go out in the field and find out. Oh, thank you. All right, so there was a lot going on there. Yeah. One of the Clawrickens fouled and was... That was apparently my phone was starting to be active now. He was getting sent off the field for being caught fouling. The foul murdered one of the goblins. The foul murdered what? One of the goblins got a 12 on the casualty roll. So we're just waiting to see that gets reported. But... Uh, I think they're forgetting to report. Ian, named after Coach Ian, uh, was caught fouling, did a foul, um, caused an injury that killed uh, the Doom Diver named Batman.
So this is technically the Cunning Squigs are the home team for this game. So to come off of a, a, a conceded defeat that was 3 nothing to have this. A death. Yeah. What do you think the fans would do narratively, you know? Well, uh, they wouldn't uh, They wouldn't be in the stands much after that second quarter. Yeah, you, you'd imagine Goblin fans would come on out. Oh, yeah, Goblin fans are gone. And I, th I, don't th I think they'd tear apart everybody. On the way out. I mean, generically, they would also. Yeah. You think that probably they'd mostly focus on the coach. <laughs> still up there on that top sideline right now we got blocks getting thrown Ooh, looks like one of the lizard men just got thrown into the crowd another door throw to block just getting another push out of there following up There's two stumbles that are showing up on the door side. Two stumbles are showing up, and that's after one of the lizard men got thrown into the crowd. Did we just, you were getting something marked up here, it looks like. Oh, we've got another one thrown into the crowd. Is this a chain push? Hmm? Oh, man, that would be the second chain. So it looks like he's got a counter in his casualty box yep. for these lizards. It's probably because he doesn't have enough models total yeah. for how many skink lizards he has. hit. Dwarves do hit hard. Got dice throwing hard on both tables. Casualties and injuries waiting to report. Sounds like some armor breaking on table two. Yeah, let's go take a look and see what we got going on over there. This looks like a big crunch in the middle of the table on table two. Less of a crunch here. Oh, there's a casualty. What's the cross door doing? Who's he hurt? Door hit somebody. Go the boat down, okay. Not a casualty. Yeah. Oh, they can. They can.
So it was just in the excitement. It was the forgetting exactly what a casualty is. It is not a casualty. Uh, it was a both down result where they both were stayed on the table. Gotcha. But a casualty is marked when you go to the casualty box. So on your dugout, you've got three zones for models to sit. You have a reserve zone, which is the largest zone. You've got a knockout zone, which is in the middle. And then you have the casualty zone. So, so on if the you far have, end with the skull, skull and crossbones. Yes. So if you have a player that sends somebody to a casualty box, that player now scores a casualty. Of course, that's when you should have a corresponding injury because that the injury table is either misses the rest of this game, the next game, or is dead. Yeah. And that's the three different roles that a casualty can generate there. So every time there's a casualty, there should be an injury report going. Heard a grunt going on table one. Yeah. Sound like Tyler. Hoping for a roll. Looks like uh we're at the top or bottom of the tenth down. Still doors are up one nothing and doors have possession of the ball. And they just knocked out player ten skink, chameleon skink from the next game. Yeah. Which that means the rest of this season, because there's only he one is. game left in this season. Sneakiest player is gone for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, what's his name? Buhua <clears throat> Joe. Uh, uh, yes, I think you've done it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, uh, not earned, just got injured. How did out. he get injured? Somebody hit him, or did he fall down? Uh, I think he fell, yeah. Uh, so he went to go block himself and, and got in. Forced and got a turnover out of that, which is unfortunate because now he's going to be missing the next game. Ugh. His troll slayer is out. So he's missing the troll slayer from last game because for this game. Yep. So and right now, right now he has no troll slayer. And so he'll start next team and he'll get his other troll slayer back. Yep. Well, everybody that's out there watching, let us know how what you think of this. If you're wanting more of this, you got to let us know. We'll dedicate more resources to it if it's something that you're interested in. Whether you're watching this on live or in Post. syndication. If you're watching after the fact on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you are watching us live right now, whether you're on Facebook or Twitch or YouTube, uh, let us know where you're watching from. All right, more, more, more. That's what we're getting from the comment section currently. Go take a look over here. <clears throat> take a look. See, so we are in the bottom of the 11th. Close to the end of the bottom of the 11. We're about to go into the final turn here. Yeah, that's for the second half too. So yeah. Um, so it looks like unless this game gets tied up soon, this game's a, a gonna finish out in the yeah. They both have of the dwarves. They both have one down left, and the dwarves they're holding the ball still. So uh, well, not impossible. It's not not likely. impossible, but. There are two skinks left on the board. Meanwhile, on table number two, we're looking Three. at the bottom of the eighth. And so we've got most of the second half to go on that table still. We'll take a look at the scoreboard up here because we can see here that the uh, Clarkins are leading with a score of one to nothing. Uh, the scoreboard is reverse of what you see on the board. Uh, on the table itself, we have the Cunning Squigs on the left-hand side, and the Clarkins are on the right-hand side from the camera angle here. 
So, so that's not going to match up with the, uh, the what's on the screen, right? So the yeah. player on the left is the team on the right. Uh, for the scoreboard, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Look at that, 10. Ten's always interesting. Ian's doing a great job of help, uh, helping us see what's rolling on the yeah. table. So there's an eight. That is so he's going to bring stun. it on over. There's a stun. Again, the red rings. Not the easiest to see for all of us out there. Like, I'm having difficulty. I don't know if you are with the red rings, but there's two of them on the table. Those denote stuns. So some of these models don't want to rest on their face or on their back. Mm -hmm. The red rings help us note that they would be technically on their face. Here and take a look at the final turn going on for the short and sour versus the dog frogs. And we have short and sour. Dog frogs are making their final final attempt. Oh wait, no. The end of the Oh 11th. no, there goes the ball handler dwarf right down on his back. Bar yeah, ball handler dwarf has dropped. It means he's gonna bounce that ball <clears throat> since you can't be on the ball space. The ball can't be on the same space as anybody that's not picking up or carrying the ball. And we have a skink going for the pickup. Oh, man. That would just be... And he failed the pickup. Oh, no. <sighs> that's going to that's gonna cinch it for, for Tyler there. He's, he's going to grab a hold of this one. He's, all he's got to do is make sure nobody picked... He could just down it right now. He could just take a knee. He could just take a knee and be... And he, he's not going to. He's going to finish out the turn. Yeah, That's he, just how Tyler wants to You have to a work. chance to get to, to pick... Well... There's almost no chance for him to there, pick up no the ball and get it in. Because he doesn't have anybody fast enough. Aside from that, uh, the lizard men have tackle zones blocking off access to the ball altogether. Right. But... It's going to get down to the wire. Yeah. There's some dice rolls. I'm interested to see what these dice rolls say. Looks like he's pushing people out of the way. He's going to try for it. Looks like guy in gold armor is going to stand up for three. He's trying to calculate if he can go for it with a pickup. And that's going to be it for table one. That's a handshake, as they've called it done. So table one ends in a win for the dwarves. The Bull Salon Dog Frogs taking their first loss of the tournament gauntlet. Looks like I've got to re reinstate one of the players for the, the team, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Again, the teams aren't supposed to be losing players to draft out during the gauntlet. And it looks like uh, Short and Sour has gained a fan as a result of this game. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Again, these things matter because these teams are redraftable in our next season. We're going to take uh, about nine weeks off of Blood Bowl while we run a Kill Team League. And we're going to be doing some of the similar things with streaming and stuff for that too. Number six needs to be reinstated. So while we're taking that break, these people are going to sit there and think if they want to start up a new team, or... I'm going to take a look over here at the action going on table two. Oh, and it looks like we're close to a touchdown, potentially. Yeah, I'm showing that Dreos is already instated. Maybe I need to do a refresh here. Yeah, I'm showing Dreos is actually active, number six. Did you verify that? So Coach Jackson? I'm not completely finished. Okay. Uh, because I'm on the secondary thing. The reason I'm asking now is because it's taken him out of the running to get full court. Oh. I'm showing that he, yeah. You're probably right. It probably is that. All right. And because I haven't known that, I probably won't let you move. Now it should probably update. Chameleon 
Squigs thinks they got knocked out. It's the one who got the upgrade. I know. The Squigs are... That's Squigs are making a push for the touchdown here. That's got to actually really kind of be a... That's got to suck. A digital slap in the face from the system. Yeah. Hey, the guy that's not coming back, he's the one you rolled an upgrade on. Someone didn't pray to Nurgle. The Nuffle? Yeah. yeah Nuffle. So, <laughs> or Nurgle. Or Nurgle. I am... Not uh, even corn. Yeah, I'm, my, I'm in a blender right now with my brain. Yeah, so the thing is, is if you choose a random secondary... You choose a random player to get a random secondary. Right. You could always select a player to get a random primary. And that guarantees that you know exactly who that prim- that one's going on. Now, the thing is, is the, the one who drafted out that I had to put back in was taken out of the running to get an upgrade because he's in this quasi-state. And that's going to be a failing of the system. Equally applied to all players. So, but... He has got two upgrades already, which, of course, he's probably going to get drafted out. They, the idea is that when you go to, if you're doing this manually, for every player that has an upgrade, you roll a D6. And if you roll the number of upgrades that player has or less, then that player gets drafted to a big league team is the, is the concept behind drafting out. I get that. So with... Multiple upgrades, it's a higher chance to draft out. All right, so table two. Still got a stun player nearly dead center. We're going, uh, we're at the top of the 10th, and uh, it looks like Gabe, Gabe is taking one of his squigs in for oh, a, touchdown. a touchdown. Po- Pogo, the guy's name is Nark. Got a touchdown. Tyler, how's it feel to win? Sucks, but hey, it was close. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was a tight game. We enjoyed watching it. It was, it was a lot less nitty gritty than the last game I played. I barely pulled out that tie. So that's a good way to clear it. A stun off of a guy is to just cause a, a new drive. Yeah. So we're setting up for the kickoff. Kickoff is going to have three and a half downs. He's Ian's gonna... tied this one up again, or had it tied up for him. Yep. Two and a half downs, or two and a half innings to get anything done. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's looking possibly like we might have two ties for Ian. That would put him under a tie and a win that Tyler has. And technically, that'll put him under even a win then loss that the dogs frogs have. Yeah. So it would put it your. It would essentially make your final into a rematch of what was just played. Well, that's kind of interesting. So let's think of it now, real quick. So typically the winner of table one should play the winner of table two. But now we're going to have two 1-0 and players. Yeah, so it looks like we probably will just go into flipping home teams. And keep the same players on the same table. But hopefully not. Like, I don't really know that I have the mechanics, the mechanical ability in here to switch it up if it's not. Originally, we were expecting in three rounds, every player was going to play every other player. But we didn't put it in as a round robin. This was put in as a Swiss. Right. So it is going to be Swiss pairings. And in this one instance, if things go like what the trajectory looks like they're going to, Unless Ty, unless Ian can pull a win out. Ian's going to see what he can do. If Ian gets a win, that puts us at one tie, one win, two people with a one in a tie, and one person with a win and a loss. And put Tyler and Ian in first place. Then we're going to have a rematch of the f- last game. Either way, we're getting a rematch. It looks, yes. 
Yeah, it looks like Gabe is never going to play Tyler, is what we're looking at. Wow. Of course, if the alternative thing is if we could have had a couple more players in this, it probably yeah. wouldn't be this this exact scenario. So <laughs> it's just four players specifically with a tie on the first game, potentially a tie on the second game. That's not that is one of the tires from the first game. Yeah, it could go either way, but it's going to be rematch or A rematch. or rematch B. It's like this. The first game literally tied a knot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a roll of a four. Looks like that's a four on an armor check. Ian's doing so great. I'm loving that he's helping us out, see what's going on. Mm Ian's counting spaces, trying to push up. He's not even trying to pick up the ball yet. Because, of course, in Blood Bowl, you want to do all the non-risky things first. And the risky things are anything that requires a die roll. The more, the more dice, the less risky it is. But if it requires any dice, it's riskier than requiring no dice. So he's going to do all his movement. Here he goes to pick up the ball. I think he's going to need a three or higher. That was a two. Looks like he got it with a four. Oh, okay. Did Got goblins going. Top of the 11th inning. Goblins are counting out spaces, trying to figure out which way to run. If only there was a few more time. Like, this is when I'm in, in Ian's position, I feel like. If only there's a moment where I could have one extra inning. This, and this, this is just so I could try a feint and get all of the goblins to appeal to this one out of bounds line, which he's on that line, right? Yeah. All I see is I, I see somebody on that line and I want him to be eaten by the crowd. But as part of a feint, you don't get much more taste of your bait than being on the edge, exactly. right? So if, if with one more inning, you could easily feint. I don't think, I don't think you can pull it out without that extra inning. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of stumbles and a both down. So stumbles again on characters that have dodge only work as a push. If they don't have dodge, it works as a as a block action or a block result so you actually knock them down okay bringing in some of his fast units to start tying up some stuff Rolled at least a four.
Oh, it doesn't matter to me. We've got 20 minutes left in this, but I don't think it's actually going to go to time. I think we're going to finish up both of these innings first. Although this one's starting to crawl. You can see that Gabe's only taking 22 minutes. I'm coming up on 23 minutes, whereas Ian took 30 minutes. a lot of discussion even coach Tyler looking on looking pensive trying to figure out who he's going to play next go but we already know it, yeah. it, it's not going to be one of those two people Yeah, so next Sunday starts our t Kill Team Tournament for our Kill Team League. Nine weeks we're going to run. We're going to start with the tournament, end with the tournament, and have seven weeks of league play. And season three of Blood Bowl follows directly afterwards. So that'll be starting in July? Double fours on that? I've not done the math, but that sounds almost exactly correct. Uh, oh, Ian's going for it. Yeah. Ooh, he's got Ian. an opening. He's got some dodges with a stunty. Did he already make his dodge checks? Is that what happened? Ian, he made a touchdown. Oh my God! There go. up two to one. And of course, this is at the bottom, the top of the twelfth. You get one inning. Again, like I said, there I have made a kickoff return touchdown. It's it takes everything to be perfect and things out of your control. It can you happen. The right kickoff event, the right displacement mm -hmm. of the ball on kickoff. It's possible. It's just not free. And that's going to end it. They're going to end. So I got to go back in and add Casket to the Goblins. He's number 52. Oh. Well, yeah. Of course, I need them to finish up their choices on upgrades before I do this. Again, this is the exact same thing that happened. So Goblins look like they are ready. And there we go. So, matches finally reported. I can now do the upgrade. 52. Matches reported. Uh, I'm going to send this to music, and we're going to take a break for a little bit for that. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be gone as long, since everybody kind of took a long break between the other two. Um, but once the teams are all in place, we will kick back on. So, I imagine about 10-minute break. It's a great time to go get a sandwich and not watch any commercials. Go stretch, yeah.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the next ones. We're expecting it to be a replay of game one. Pulling the pairings now. Fixtures are up. We're gonna look at the fixtures, and we have on table one Cunning Swigs as a way against Short and Sour. So we are gonna go round robin. Everybody's gonna play everybody. All right, so. Short and Sour is the home team on table one today. Now, playing the Squigs. And on table two, the Bullslawn Dog Frogs versus the Clawricans. It's going to be Lizard Man on Lizard Man action, with the Clawricans being the home team. So, Clawricans being the home team. All right, this is good. That's going to be more fun. It's going to be a lot it's more It's going to give us a different showing. Yeah, and we're going to see lizards versus lizards. Yeah. That's the mirror match I want to see. Yeah. It's, it's, so squigs, oops all squigs, versus most, I mean, croxigore. That's really kind of what it comes down to. There's a saurus and a croxigore, but it's so, that croxigore that's... Eventually, I need to buy the Lizardman kit because I, it's like I probably, I honestly will buy it so that I can feel better using a proxy team because I want to play li Lizardman, but I don't want to use their models. I want to use dinosaurs. Use actual dinosaurs. I want to. I, I found the STLs for like dinosaur models for Blood Bowl, and they I, are. I think at that. I think that at that point in time, you just go to Hobby Lobby or. Michaels, and you get one of those dinosaurs in a tube kits. <laughs> You've got your like uh, duckbill dinosaurs, and those could be your squigs. You've got your carnosaurs, like your allosaurus or whatever. That can be your your regular saurus. And maybe you make your ankylosaurus or whatever be your croxicor. I'm about to. You're, you're gonna make me look up the file now because I have it saved. Because I, for at home play, I will confess that I did, uh, I did ninjas for elves. <laughs> well, man, at home, like, they're just games, right? Yeah, it's like at home play is one thing. Coming up yeah. to a game shop is, I'm not pulling stuff off the 3D printer. And, and, and it's substituting legitimate stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, there's a point, right, where it's, it's it's just whatever it is you know like that's why we offer 3d filament and resin yeah just so those people that really want to use those models they can still support the store so that's really what it comes down to when you're talking about 3d prints and how welcome they are at a tournament yeah it's it's more about are you trying to bypass the store that's exactly. paying for the table and keeping it clean hopefully for keeping it clean and keeping the lights on and doing all of these events, it takes money, drive, and effort. And these events are really designed to showcase what kind of store you are and, if, and attract players that are interested in that kind of store so that they will be your customers. Exactly. So here we try to keep it as a community. The community supports the retail, the retail supports the community. The more that we sell, the more we turn around and just dump that into price support and everything else to help support the community, do more events, have more fun. And that's just entirely how we run this from the game. Both teams are setting up for the kickoff. You can see that they're going through the kickoff materials. And they are probably going and doing their upgrades now, even though they had a five minute break, and they only wanted to take a five minute break. Uh, they probably forgot to do their upgrades. Oh no, I gotta do my upgrades. Uh, Squigs and Short and Sour have started their timer. Well, they haven't started their first turn, but they have uh, already rolled their start table. They're so doing their inducements. The weather's nice. They both have a fan factor of three. Kind of Squigs are employing a part time assistant coach and bringing along one blood weather kick. Party. Short and Sour has two blood weather kicks and one part time assistant coach helping them out for the day. Yeah, there's no reason not to spend some of the cash on on this up to this point in time because the cash that you're going to get from here 
is really just going to go to upgrade your team if you redraft the same team. Now, this is the second season we run a Dane Wolf Blood Bowl League, and this is the second season that Coach Tyler has run short and sour. So, we did not have the ability to redraft from season one. Uh, Tour play gives us that ability. So it'll be interesting to see if he wants to do worse in season three. Both times he's gotten up to the top table. Yeah. And at this point in time, he's tied for first. I think technically he has first uh, in overall at this stage going into this game. I'm going to pull up the uh, standings now. If I take a look here. Yeah, he's the number one place right now yep. through all tiebreakers. And Clawrickens in second place with the dog flies in third. It'll be interesting. Then anything could happen. Anything and everything. By the time we get to round two on table one, we'll know exactly how volatile this scoring mechanic is going to be. And we've got people on the table setting up. And there's the, the kickoff on table one. Of course, I say this well in advance of what you can see on the screen. Actually, you're behind me. No, you're monitoring on that. That's behind me. I'm actually monitoring on the table. Okay, oh, then you're in time. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, over on table two, we have... Uh, let me get our camera looking at that real quick. All right, so we have a timeout on table... Uh, table one, which is going to start them off on second inning. This is this is all that's been happening to Coach Tyler the entire day. I guarantee you, he's going to get a kickoff event where he's going to lose three of his dwarves for the drive. He came to play three games. He's going to leave playing two and three quarters. Right. <laughs> uh, so over here on table two, we have uh, another. Another nice weather game. Um, also a uh, fan factor, equal fan factor, plus the uh, plus three for both of them. Uh, Clarkins have one more fan than the dog frogs. Uh, and the inducements, they are both bringing a uh, bribe to the table. Interesting. And uh, the Clarkins have one Bloodweiser cake, while the dog frogs have two. Say, this is our most, our foulest group of people playing. Gabriel and Ian. That's the Squigs and the Clawrickens. So it's interesting to see that the dog frogs have decided to get a little protection in the foul department. <laughs> and for table two, uh, we have Clarkins on the right side of the scoreboard, Dog Frogs on the left, but again, uh, inverted because, on the because the camera is inverted, the Clarkins and Coach Ian are playing from the left hand side of the board, and uh, the Dog Frogs are playing from the right hand side of the board. Man, I'm just so excited. This is this is a great little matchup. I I absolutely enjoyed round one. I absolutely enjoyed round two. It's good to see that everybody is getting a chance to see every other team. Yeah. This this round three has got me so. And going into rematches up. on round three is that's a buzzkill. Snake eyes. Each team gets a free rush on the get the ref roll. That's what happened on round on table two. <laughs> They're still getting that set up. We've got some action going on here over on uh, table one, so let's take a look at that real quick. Hey oh. So we are at the bottom of the second down here. Short and Sour has possession. Short and Sour is in control right now. Uh, it looks like, oh, and that's the end of his turn, too. <laughs> They're going up to the top of the third, and it looks like Gabe is bringing the goblins in. Uh, I'm thinking Tyler's probably, it really looks like Tyler's playing cagey. Just going to 
get all as many goblins to come out his way so that he can just try and punch a hole through with the doors, which it seems logical. Yeah, he's got the classic, like, wedge. Yeah. I mean, that's not like the wedge in Tilly's wedge, but it's about the same. It's a Roman wedge. It's almost as reliable. Yeah. have Gabe's cunning squigs playing from the left hand side winding up with the left hand side of the scoreboard here and we have the uh, Tyler's short and sour coming from the right hand side They're playing a very quick game right now. They are at the bottom of the third down, and Gabe has only committed a minute and four seconds to his turn. So I got a feeling that he's probably had a couple of turnovers happen. Now I've been watching Tyler try to get up there, right? He's running the top part of the screen. He's got his ball carrier up there. He's kind of undefended. Almost undefended. Looks like he's 
so fucked. I keep forgetting that gray guy is actually a dwarf. Yeah, like at least with these. I forgot to turn the music down. Thank you for that heads up. <laughs> All right. Looks like on table two, we've just started the second inning. We're at the top of the second one and just barely into it. Let's go take a look at that. There's a lot of uh, pensive looks at players from the coaches. Now, Ian and Jackson know each other very, very well. They play against each other a lot. Um, they both discuss tactics and stuff. It's not super surprising to see both of them play Lizardmen because they have a lot of the same ideas. Yeah. Not entirely the same, as you can see in how they've drafted their team. But they did start off the same with just all squigs. Nothing special. Go very, very wide. And it's paid off for both of them for the most part. Now, last game, I was talking to Coach Tyler and Coach Jackson, and both of them attributed Jackson's failures to dice rolls. And it just seemed that, like, any time he tried to dodge out, which is yeah. one of the, their big positives for their team, he right. would roll once. If he needed a three up, he would absolutely roll worse than two. And it was just so consistent that he couldn't pull anything out. And it's just that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. But it is Blood Bowl. It is all chaos all the time. It's managed chaos. So it looks like Ian's taking one of his uh, one of his skinks, running around to the right hand side or bottom side of the screen, his right hand side, uh, and he just handed off the ball to another skink. Looks like he's debating whether or not he, uh, how far he can go. I think it's going in. I think it just went in. I think he's he's debating. I think he's like one short. Looks yeah. like he's gonna go for it. He's gonna roll for it. Looks like he got, got a three a, there. No, I don't think he went for it. I think that was no, for a different. No, that's throwing a block. Yeah, so he's one space away from the end zone. Yeah, <clears throat> so instead of going for it, what he did was he uh, turned to block uh, block against these other lizard men that stand a chance to come follow up and attack and try to stop it, rob his upcoming touchdown. Yeah, it looks like he chose the, the best of options. He had, a, he had a stumbles and a both down result. Mm -hmm. So he took the stumbles, which... Of course, the skink has dodged, so it counts as a push right. instead of as a knockdown. Hmm. But Jackson has Lizardman on the side of the, the current line of scrimmage, on his side of the line of scrimmage, where the ball is. It doesn't take much for these lizards to do to break away and run after him. Mm -hmm. So being parked right at the end zone, at least he's not right up on the out of bounds line. Right. Right. Thumbs up there from Ian. He's going to roll some more dice. Doesn't look like he was happy with that one. On the other side of things, we go take a look here at table one. They are already nearing the end of their first half. Yeah, Tyler plays pretty quick, and uh, doing so kind of instills you to play quick. Well, but, also, but, I, got a, I haven't really been looking too much, but Gabe only has two and a half minutes logged 
for control, so I got a feeling that he's probably had a couple of bad rolls there on blocks. Yeah. Or just anything to do. Yeah. So don't forget, they also started on it's the second inning because of their kickoff event. Yeah, that's true. So if a touchdown was scored, they can get that same result in the kickoff event. It adds It in. did happen on... I don't think it's happened in this... this it's, it's happened, happened in the league several time. times, but I don't think it, it happened, happened on the first game. game. One of the first games. They added an inning after subtracting an inning. Oh wait, no, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, but, but it can happen, up. so you yeah. end up with the same net innings. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not likely because it's not likely to come up. But it has come up every game for Coach Tyler. It doesn't look like this time he started with having three players falling down, though. That's true. <laughs> but it's happened to him every game, but not always at the beginning. So there's still a whole bunch of innings left yeah. to find out if that's going to happen. And it definitely looks like this game has been a slugfest the whole time. Yeah, man. It's just about, just about everybody is on the ground. So let's take a look at these standings real quick. We've got Short and Sour with four tournament points. Flowerkins with four tournament points. That's both from a tie, then a win. Both of them had. The Bolson Dog Frogs had a win, then a loss. So that's putting them at three points, tournament points. And the County Squigs had zero points because they've failed to make anything happen this game. Yep. But it's still, County Squigs could potentially get three points. If they win. If they do, that means short and sour doesn't get any extra points. They'll be sitting at four. At which point in time, wait, wait, no. Honey, sweet, yes. So then it's all about what does the dog frogs do against the clavericans. Yeah. If the dog frogs win, that six points goes, six tournament points go to the dog frogs. If they tie, That'll be four, and then Clawrickens will end up with five points. If they tie, then Clawrickens would be... If they tie and Short and Sour loses, then... Clawrickens will Clawrickens win. would win. With two ties and a win. Would draw their wins. <laughs> it's, it's not looking likely, but it is entirely possible. And it's interesting to think down these lines. What's possible, and then gauge how likely that is against everything right so if if short and sour wins that's going to be seven points there and then the only contender to win to tie that would be the clobber kids so the first tiebreaker in this in this tournament is the opponent's strength of schedule is that burkholz score and it looks like uh we have a touchdown scored by short and sour uh dwarf runner number 99 at the top of the fifth. They're getting ready to line up for another kickoff. I do believe that's Browthrod Keenmaker. He's got three upgrades on that dwarf that just scored. Yes, I, oh man, yeah, I can see that. Oh, I hear something from the Wizard oh. game. They are in their second half and at the top of the third down. Still tied. Wait, I'm sorry, they're still in the first half. They're managing... At the top of the third down. I'm sorry. Table yeah. one and bouncing back had my brain slow. Right? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so, yeah, table two, we're at the top of the third inning. Now at the bottom of the third inning as we just switch over. There we go. It looks like that was the, that call from Coach Jackson was, was a very good roll for him that was rolled by Ian, causing the turnover. Mm. It's a tight game up there, still 0-0. Zero zero. Generally, by now, one of them's in scoring position. And, of course, Ian is in scoring Ian position, but he's scoring been in scoring position. position. So, um, it looks to me like he went for a block and ended up getting a both down out of it. He decided to go for a delay of game tactic, maybe, because he was only one space away on his turn to just walk it in. Yeah. So he chose not to. He decided to get a little brass. And... Ended up not working out for him. No. So this this makes it extra, extra interesting as the dog frogs now have, have the option to spank that guy Speaking right in the front of which, of the we've got a skink coming up in spanking position. Right. Locked S-foils in attack position. Oh, yeah. 
going for the block. And set phasers two. We have a skink down. Set phasers stun because you're down. All right, this ball's gonna bounce. If it yeah. bounces back at the guy causing the block, he's gonna pick it up and run. Oh if yeah. If it bounces out of bounds, there's a three in eight chance for it to go right out of bounds. Oh man. I think it did. Here comes the armor roll. It came back. It did not go out of bounds. It stayed on the field. Oh! Armor roll of 10. I see a stun marker. We've got one of our newer customers showing his girlfriend our bathrooms because they're so clean. Yeah, if you're watching us, if you've caught us on YouTube, go ahead and go over to Facebook if you can and give us a like and a share or at least a like and a follow. Stay up to date with news that we have of all the different events that we have there. We have five different groups for each of the different genres of games that we have, including trading card games, board games, role-playing games, and then miniature games and Games Workshop miniature games. Every one of them has a two-question bot wall to keep the internet trash out. Don't be internet trash. This cluster right in the center of the field, you don't generally find people running down the center. You get, you, you, you have safety in the end zone, in the out of bounds edge, right? Yeah. Even in football, you start, you find people running down the sides, sidelines, right? So to see this, the, the goblins running down the center, it's kind of not, not expected, but that's, that's going to be Coach Gabe and his goblins doing unexpected things unexpectedly. It's it's worked out for him a lot, but not every time. We'll be able to see how well it goes through here. So this is them starting off the second half of their game. Top of the seventh down. The Lizardmen fight is at the top of the fourth inning still. Only s about 18 minutes into their game of clock time. Man, I don't know that I can sit in front of this mic very well. I'm, I'm so kind of amped up with adrenaline while I'm watching this. <laughs> I feel like I'm back and forth all over the mic. This is why I like the arms. <laughs> right? That makes a lot more sense. All four of these coaches are deep, deeply paying attention to what's going on. The frivolity of round one is long gone. The ease of round two stripped away. Round three, this is this is it. If, even though like, every game has a championship on the line for it, more or less. 
Yes. Both games have the championship on the line. Right. It matters not, what happens on both. Yeah. It's not like one is the championship game. and No, they both are. Gabe's not going to win. This is all we know. Gabe is not going to win. But who, Everybody how well he does. Everybody has a chance to take everything right now. Right. How well he does have, have makes a major effect on everything. Yeah. No ripple goes unnoticed. You got dwarves push, push, pushing. I'm gonna hop over and take a look and see what we've got going on at table Looks like two. we got chain pushing going on in the center. Our <coughs> and dwarves are segregated out of that ball carrier on table one. Table two looks like we're looking things up. I'm going to go just make sure we are moving as smooth as possible over on table two. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of mind games going on on table two. This is a, a nice little cluster in the, in the bottom right corner of the field. Yeah. And Ian's trying to make it work for him at this point in time. He's doing some dodging to get out. Well, right now he has Jackson's ball carrier blocked in against the sideline. And if he doesn't do it this turn, by gosh, he's probably about to be trying to push him into the crowd. Don't forget that red ring means a stun effect. In some game systems, you would call this a kill box. Yeah, now the action's moving further and further away from the ball at this point in time. That table one melee just is not moving from that center of that field. It looks just like when we were looking at it last. It is not. I am. Yeah, the goblins have the ball. They've been pushed back to just the the line of scrimmage almost, their own line of scrimmage. Coach Gabe's thinking really, really hard. You can see him stimming there with his tap, tap, tappy. The things you hear said in a game shop. Right. Yes. Half of people watching is people listening. Or right. people hearing, really. Sometimes I don't even do it on purpose. Yeah, it's just it's one not, sentence will carry across the hearing. whole room. All right, so the rule was figured out on table two. And 
Jackson's moving his minions down the field. I think this is time for a zebra cake break. <laughs> So we're not seeing it, but table one, the ball is loose on the field. Oh yeah, had game two up here. Let's go back over and look at table one. Tyler's seeing if he can go and pick up the ball and figure out exactly what, how many dodge rolls he's going to have to do to do it. Still not picked up that ball. Trying to weigh his chances uh, and choices. Tyler doesn't have anybody there right now. In order to have a chance to even go get it, he's got to be past so many dodges. Yeah. And is he going to try? He's going to. Looks like he's going to try one of those guys. 
You'd always go for it with one of those guys that are down to get those some of those extra space in the pack. And uh, but to make a dodge check away from one of those trolls. Yeah. Throws a block, pushes one of the goblins out of the way to at least try and get some kind of protection, whether or not he gets the ball. Here we go. I'm going to try to pick it. He's got sure hands. So it looks like that's snatched up. Got it. Table two has moved a lot to the north central. I see. On the board. It stayed in that bottom right corner for so Jackson long. has been maintaining possession over the past. Yeah, it's just been. Yeah, you can tell it's been a little square because he's got the, the square, base. square base. Yeah. Try. Hey, maybe Ian's, maybe Ian's got that ball getting knocked loose. All right, we got stuff being entered in. Looks like. All right, one skink runner lineman has ish has uh, caused a casualty waiting for the injury report. It looks like it's the uh, OSHA, the chameleon skink, is now missing oh, this game. Oh, I totally was looking in the wrong order. <laughs> Ian's, Ian's lineman has absolutely beat the snot out of a chameleon skink of Jackson. Dog dogs are down another player. You can tell both of these cases are real, real tight. Looks like we had an injury, another badly hurt injury on table one as well. Let's go to the action over there and take a look. The one troll slayer back from taking a break. Oh man. Has come back and just cold cocked the narc pogoer. That is two games in a row that narc the pogoer has been taken out of the game. Yeah, and he's gonna miss the next game. Net nice thing is is Everybody gets reset by the, for the, by the next game. There is no game to miss, at least. Tyler's trying to protect the one touchdown he got from the first half. As we're in the bottom of the ninth. We're in the bottom of the Dwarven ninth. Dwarven turn. Still holding on to possession right now. Both of these games, the ball is having a lot of movement. Yeah. And it's going through a lot of different hands. They're not even on the same team's hands. There's a lot of turnovers going on. Now I've got Jacob standing in the way, so I can't see any of the games. He says it's his bad and moves out of the way.
in and around. You can tell Tyler gets really excited because he starts leaning further and further over the table with his big ball cap, right? Luckily, the action is outside of his ball cap coverage. It looks like it's over. They're shaking hands and saying good game. Yeah, it looks like the goblins have conceded. Right, they've made a made a, an agreement. And Gabe, Gabe's starting to talk about not rolling good. I'm just not rolling good. Yeah, that's he's rolled really good all league, which has been punishing to other players as he's really tried to foul them and yeah. and knock them around and stuff like that. So it's always it's always tough when your luck runs out after depending on said luck for so long. Yeah. Sounds like we have a touchdown on table two. Oh yeah. The dog frogs have scored a touchdown. Yeah, he would have been drafted out if it was a draft outable uh, game. Yeah, this game's this game's not as quick as the other ones. We uh, went ahead and ended it and seen it. been turning my mic off and I've been forgetting to unmute myself. I've been talking to a dead mic. Oh, you've been talking. To, oh, you know well, what? Well, that was only that, re only like the last round. A couple that's of happened times. to us so many times whenever yeah. we've gotten it together. I think it's a natural <laughs> thing. It's always going to happen at some point. It's because it's because we're interested in the game, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> For those that don't know that I used to do these streams with Joel over Star Wars Legion some years ago for a number of gosh I really don't know we had it for like a while. How long. it was a very long time it's great to be back doing this with you Joel agreed this is fun I'm enjoying it and we've had good games to broadcast yeah that always makes it good when you've got good players and no drama drama and it's easier to manage when you're not the one also trying to play the game <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. Shallow kickoff. Which train troll did it? He just lose. Jimbo Jr.
Ian's going for it. I'm doing some fouling action, so lizard on lizard fouls. the sixth this is the end of the first half dog frogs up one to nothing the ball is loose on the field it looks like we've got one of the clawrick and skinks watching after it but not on top of it if i were to take a guess i think he's just gonna play it safe well, Ian needs a point to tie it up. Ian does need a point to tie it up, but and this is the first half. Yep. Um, but Ian did also have possession to start it out. So armor's broken. Looks like we're going to get a stun result at least. Yep. So he's going to the knockout room. Looks like we're setting up for the end of the half. We're going to set up for another drive with kickoff. Fresh kickoff coming. I was wondering where that went. Thank you. Yep. Second half kickoff event coming up. Kickoff event die happens. Got a brilliant coaching coach event. This is going to be where you need assistant coaches to help you. So Ian won a free re roll for this drive. That can be big. Dog frogs moving up the field. Trying to come around and hit the clawrickens in the back. Yeah, currently, if if the Clarikans win, which right now they're down, one to nothing, they'll tie up for main tournament points. They'll lost, they'll win three tournament points for winning. If they lose, they'll gain zero. If they tie, they'll gain one. So right now, after the con the Goblin concession, the Dwarves are up to seven points total. A tie for the dog frogs and clawricans makes the current standings uh, stay exactly where they are with clawricans in second, dog frogs in third. <laughs> so 
So the only way, the only way this gets super interesting is, here's the thing, currently the Clawrickens and the Dog Frogs have a Burkholz score of 7%, which is exactly what the, the Short and Sour Dwarves have. When this game is over, one of them will have a higher than 7%, mm -hmm. and the other one will have a lower than 7%. But they can't both be seven after this game because right. your strength, your opponent's strength of schedule, gets better right. or, and worse, right? So that's the that's the first tiebreaker. But it looks like if if the Clarkins can pull this out somehow and get a win, they will prop they will win the whole championship. If they fail to win, the short and sour dwarves will in fact be the champion. And that is all we're playing for right now. All we're checking out is who can coach Ian, pull his lizards out, and get this going. That's, or is, is it just over? So to go back earlier, 11 weeks from today, which is when we're going to be starting up Blood Bowl Season 3 around here, will be June 30th. So we were saying July. We we're right at the very, this is the last, last Sunday in June is when we're going to be starting back up again. getting some rolls that he's not hoping for. Those are pushes instead of knockdowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ball's gonna be bounced because of the hit. Sounds like the armor gets cracked. Yep. So the fans are going to throw this one back in. Yay. This is always a fun one to watch happen. And here we go, all the way to the other side of the table. Bounces right up on the edge, ready to, <laughs> to bounce right back out. So that's the next time somebody steps on that space, they have to take a chest to pick it up. That's an agility test. Both of these teams are rather agile, the three up ag agility for almost everybody on their team. So there's a 66% chance that they'll actually pick it up. But if they don't, there's a one in there three and eight chance it goes back into the stands to get thrown out again. <laughs> At least we're not really close to a corner because then the chances just skyrocket. It's just going to bounce around. Pinball all across the board, and you never know where it's going to land. Ian counting down spaces, trying to figure out what he's going to do.
sure hands picking up the ball. Yep. We've also got 40 minutes left in time, so that the game on table one was just exceedingly fast. Yeah. I mean, they did go very deep, but did not go all the way to figure out what that time fully would have taken. But yeah. it didn't really matter. They were almost at the end. The, the concession there was was one of a mercy killing at that point in time. And I think Gabe the Goblin were down about two or three guys by the end of that too. Yeah, he was losing gobbles left and right, which when you just can't roll, mm. it's what's going to happen. Yeah. Tyler's definitely benefited from his opponent's failure to roll well. Table's gotten real quiet as they're trying to figure out exactly what the next move is. We're only in the bottom of the seventh inning. Dice throwing. Ian's throwing a lot of dice all of a sudden. Uh oh, Ian's driving downfield with the ball. Hey, hey. He's moved seven spaces with that one. Doesn't look like he's going to go for it. I think he's no. starting to get a little dice shy on it. I couldn't blame him there. <laughs> so he's pushing around in the center field. Coach Jackson throwing some mind game shade out there. <laughs> Geez, this is this is cutting it down. Even Coach Tyler's sitting there with a. You can see he's like tight around his anxiety muscles in his chest. He's yeah. just clutching at his chest. He's <laughs> breathing hard. He's he's sweating. He's not even playing the game. But what happens on this table definitely determines Determined. his fate. Yeah. He looks like part of him hopes that Ian's going to win, but how part of him. That's that's exactly what's going to cause him to not. Yeah. So is. Everybody who's not playing sitting at that table is stimming so hard right now. They're rocking their feet. They're tapping. They're, they're, they're all over the place. We're rolling some more dice and moving some spaces. Looks like that was a dodge roll. And that's the end of Ian's turn. And that's the end of the in it, yeah, the half of the inning. Here we go. I'm up. The dog frogs are gonna go. Dog frogs are counting <laughs> how much they're gonna need to blitz. Did you? I, I think. Did I say ball dogs or no, something like that? I think you said dog farts. Stop me. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I have no way to check. 
so maybe I do. <laughs> we do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not actually rooting for anybody specifically in this game, so it's not a call out on trying to root for Ian <laughs> over Jackson. Oh my gosh. That was just good. I might have misheard, but I kind of hope I didn't. <laughs> Alright, here he comes. Here he brings up, and he's gonna. This is gonna be that blitz action. Jackson's going for the blitz package. Or is this a supporter unit so that he can come up and blitz with somebody else? <clears throat> he's grabbing dice, so no, this is gonna be. Yeah, this blitz. is his blitzer and what double. What do you get? What do you get? A C1 skill. Oh, oh no, it's both a downs. both down. That's not bad for Jackson. Not bad. It's not great for Ian. So it bounces into Jackson's down model, which is going to bounce then again. Because the ball cannot rest on a downed player. Yeah. It has to be on a different open space if it's not being carried. Yep, so apparently I did say dog farts. Good old Bullsland dog farts. <laughs> Brought to you by Purina. <laughs> oh, that was good. So we're reading, it looks like apothecary rules for sevens. So his apothecary is going to roll and keep his skink from being in the knockout table. He's going to go straight to reserves. So he's not going to be available until the next drive. That's one more person down for Ian's Clobbercans. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it's actually a casualty, not a knockout. Yeah, we have a casualty reported on the scoreboard. So it's a sure hands player that's going to take the hit. Coach. Coach Tyler says he's got the vapors. This is uh, this is the casualty armor breaking casualty roll on the carrier that lost the ball. Yeah. Yeah. So it ended up with a badly hurt, which means he's out for the rest of the game. Of course, any injury at this point in time is out for the rest of the game. So now we're at the bottom of the ninth. Ian has control again. He's trying counting up the spots and. Checking his odds to clear out a tackle zone there. So he's got one player that should have, I think, seven movement. If he, as long as it's not a chameleon. And he's going to do something He got else. one push there. So that's his Croxagore moving up. Yeah, there we he's go. He's picking it he's up. He's going to pick it up. He's going to try. He got it. He's going to roll for it, go, go for it. it. If he gets it in, he's going to have us. There we go. He's got it's it. It's a tie game right tie here game. at the top of the nine. Bottom, bottom of the nine. Of the bottom of the nine. <laughs> All right, well, now it just got tastier. Yeah. This. So now Ian's in a scoring position potentially, like numerically, to actually get a win. Right now we're tied. It's probably, if it was any other teams, I would say we're really done. Yeah, this There's, is a tight game between the dog farts and the midichlorians. <laughs> did you say midichlorians? Yes, I did.
<laughs> Coach Tyler's wanting to know what we're laughing about in this commentary booth. He's just going to have to go back to the YouTube and find this game. <laughs> Oh man, look at that bounce. Ian trying to remember, he, he had that extra re-roll from the brilliant coaching yeah. and absolutely never used never it. Never used it, oh my gosh. So, now all that happened, he had two re-rolls that whole drive. Of course, we're on the back half. Your re-rolls that you buy reset at, at the half. Yeah. So if you have a re-roll, you have a re-roll for the first half, and then again, another one for the second half. Brilliant coaching can award you one for a single drive. Um, the, the dugouts are, do not do the best favors for you to remember that that's a temporary re-roll. Right. As it just does compiled team re-rolls. We had a few players through the whole game go pro, uh, which is an upgrade, which means they get to have a personal reroll for every activation hmm. with a 50% chance of getting to use it. So pro is uh, you roll a d6. If you're interested in a reroll, you roll a d6. On a four up, you're allowed a reroll. Yeah. I don't think anybody on any of these teams today has pro still. Most of those players seem to draft out real fast. Fair. Which also makes sense. Thematically. All right, so we're pushing around some people. And we got a pal, so that's a down. We're going to have an armor roll. Armor's broken. We didn't crack it, so it's just a stun. Didn't crack the stun. Mm, bad time for a stun, though. <clears throat> Especially the ball just loose on the field. Now he's gonna try to pick it up. The very last thing he's done is try to pick up the ball. Coach Jackson's not giving him anything to lean on. He's going for second place hard. He's just trying to keep Ian from getting first place. They've got a very interesting board state that they've got set up. Yep, we're moving into position. We're going to do a hit. This is a team up hit. And there's the dice. Looks like we're going to get some pushes out of all those extra dice. <coughs> Ian's not able to get any pass or knockdown results. He just keeps getting pushes. That's right. So Ian's got the more aggressive of the Lizardman team because he's got the, the Croxagore who's also skilled up and everything, right? Mm -hmm. 
the question is, is are they able to remember the new upgrades that these players are getting? Because now you've been, you're on your third game, you've been playing for almost five hours now, yeah. right? And you've had some new things added to your team, mm -hmm. but do you even remember that they happen? Exactly. The pressure's on, you're getting closer to a finish. Can you step away mentally from the standings and just be in the game? Exactly. And it doesn't seem, well, some people can't. Ball's loose in the center of the field. Dog frogs are up. Will he do like he did last time and wait for the very last thing to go to try to pick up the ball? Or is he going to try to put everybody into position first? Or will he even try to hit people first? Last time he got in there and was really trying to do some hits before even rolling to pick up the ball. Well, here comes the hit attempt. Doesn't look like it went good. No, both down. Armor didn't break on Ian's player. Looks like no armor fine. break yep. either. They just clacked off each other's helmets. We're making a block action here. Oh no. Oh no. Did he get a pal? We're using a reroll. And he's gonna push. The guys are all laughing because apparently Ian can't roll something better than a push. Yep. <clears throat> So here at the bottom of the 11th inning, can't get anything to knock down, can't push out those, close off those tackle zones. Picking up that ball is going to be a challenge mm -hmm. with all of those tackle zones there. It does add a modifier to picking up. One tack, two tackle zones are active right now. So right now it looks like they both have one person up with the tackle zone over the ball. And here comes Ian, looks like he's gonna try to push him away. They're working. Okay. Yeah. Looks like we're rolling for a pickup. Oh dodging. Ian manages to pick up the ball. He's dodging out, trying to make a run. Oh no. And that will end his turn. He is fumbling. Failed the dodge. Final down. Dog frogs are up. 
Jackson going for the pass off. And Ian's pretty much like resigned to, him to, to taking a tie off. Oh, yep, there goes the touchdown. No, no, neither of us. There may be some friendly collusion going on. And the dog frogs make another touchdown. And Jari, number 14, skink runner lineman for the dog frogs, clutching it out of the jaws of victory. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, wow. And that is game with the dog frogs taking it two to one against the Clarecans. Good game to everybody. That's insane. Yeah. Pull up and take a look at the overall standings now that everything has been reported. <clears throat> so we're going to have a little bit of change for the, uh, the team values because everybody hasn't done their upgrades from this last one, right? But mm. we're talking all secondaries, I think, at this point in time. So everybody's worth probably an extra 20K. Uh, it really depends on whether it's a, an additional upgrade or not. Mm -hmm. Those are changes the values. But, so knowing that the team values are skewed a little bit, Cam look at them. Wow. I'm doing my reset since I was still in that before. But yeah, that's exactly what we talked about. With a tie, it's just not enough for Ian to come up and challenge him with his six total points. Paul Rickens are uh, four. Six total six points, points for two wins. So he cinches second place in this championship, uh, giving Tyler the win, and the coming squigs, of course, down at the bottom with no points. No points at all. I did score one touchdown. So let's just let's just hear it for the squigs. One touchdown. I, I also would like to point out that Ian has with the Clarikans has ridden the middle line throughout the entire season, going a perfect 500 on the season. Two draws, two wins, two losses, and then goes through today with one win, one draw, one loss. Riding right at that 500%, like just perfectly riding 500 for the whole season. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see the, the uh, dog frogs. <laughs> yes. Coming in second after placing in the league sixth. This ranked sixth for the whole league. Uh, That's a nice little Cinderella story. It's also 50 50 the whole time. Like yeah. They actually had 50% wins, 50% 50 losses. Uh, but again, he, he had 10 touchdowns all season. That's pretty high when you go look at all the rest of the touchdowns that season. Yeah. Here, he's got the most touchdowns of the entire game. He had five out of the entire tournament. Out of the entire tournament. Uh, short and sour taking the win with only three touchdowns all gone. And Clarikens having four touchdowns all gone. I mean, it's, 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 it's impressive. Yeah. The, with the right touchdowns and the right touchdowns. Because if we go back and take a look, it's also... What? Oh, no, never mind. I'm about to beat Dog Frogs. Scored most... Yes, Dog Frogs had that three three score game in round one and was shut out in the round two game. Yeah, you can go back to the fixtures and look if you ever want to go back. The first one was short and sour, one to one against Clarikins. Then both won. Dog Frogs, three to nothing against the Cubs. Round two saw short and sour, one zero over the Bolson on Dog Frogs. And Clarkins 2 1 against the Cone Squigs. That's going to be the Cone Squigs one touchdown. Looking at the Clark. 
<laughs> Avengers Flower Kings versus the Dog Frogs, like two to one that we just saw. Clean squeaks with zero to one against Short and Sour. So even though, like, the, the, the Davos could not score, they did really prevent people from scoring yeah. on their games. <coughs> yeah. Like, they're... <laughs> yeah. People could hear me over the very loud dialogue. Oh, shoot. I had accidentally, apparently, hit and mute. I am so sorry. I don't Have know we how been long muted the whole time? No, not the whole time, whole time, but apparently. I don't know how long of the wrap-up I just missed, and I apologize. Oh, that's awesome. So Crap. we had a perfect wrap-up. I know. But we've been on mute. No, not For a fully, bit of it. But, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> that Darn was it. awesome. Oh, they could hear us. Okay. Okay, okay. great. Cool. Redundant microphones for the win. Let's go. <laughs> yes. It's a casters one, microphones one. We tied it up against the microphones. <laughs> so this has been excellent. This has been a great game. And we are going to wrap up and clean up. And we congratulate Tyler on his win. Yes. You know, he's the season two winner. I'm sure we should still have an all-star game of season one winner against season two winner. And see how that goes. Let's see if we could get Jordan out here for that. Yeah, that'd be cool. But thanks for joining us, everybody that did, uh, especially Brom Bardor. Bar you know, I'm great with these names. <laughs> Brom Bardor. I assume that's how you say it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Congrats, Tyler. The, the audience wants to know, let you know that they congratulate you too. And uh, to next Sunday, we will be doing a kill team tournament. And we'll see if we can convince uh, Joel to come back up next we'll week. See. And we'll sign off and have a great, wonderful weekend and enjoy your Monday. Have a good week, everybody.